Because I play college ball. I am a Division I basketball player. You're not, you're not talking basketball with me. That didn't go well. Just ask them how I did it. I got out the limo, grabbed the hand, went upstairs and fucked her.
I wanna be the best in the game. Invest in my name. Check no restraints. I'm obsessed with the pain. I ingest, I retain, assess, and I change. Possessed by the thought I'll be free one day from society's restraints, money, clout, and fame. Mud disease, a plague. We all love to hate. Have to play the game. Have to make a name. All our insecurities are on this display. This is war with the enemy. Think that it was meant to be. Living in a time where disease is on every screen. I won't let them fester me. I know most are festering. Negativity is a plague for the mentally weak. No mercy, all I got is working. Never stop searching, never quench the thirsty. I'm toxic and psychotic, but this logic, you can't stop it. It's been chronic since I was a boy, so neurotic and chaotic. Go! To last with the webs I'm weaving, I can change the past with all I'm achieving. Got my foot on gas, never stop competing. If you break like glass, then this life's gonna eat them. Make mistakes yeah. real fast. Yeah. And you learn yeah. I just wanna be iconic, sipping on a gin and tonic, got me going off on a mindless topic, yeah, if I ever play I want it, you know that I'm always honest, stay away from those who are toxic, keep by your face, no way you don't want it, yeah. Don't try to drain my energy, the enemy is everything, it's mentally unhealthily, spreading like a rare disease, but I won't let it get to me, I don't need your therapy, I can leave a legacy of leading by intensity, come on, we can fight this, freedom is priceless, just like a virus living in a crisis do you feel courageous do you see greatness trust me you can take it go on and take your aim I was built to last with the webs I'm weaving I can change the past with all I'm achieving got my foot on gas never stop competing if you break like glass then this life's gonna eat them make mistakes real fast then you learn how to beat them if you take off the gas you Late night crew. What's going on, man? Are we at episode number 100? I believe we are. Say what's up to your boy. We are indeed built to last. Definitely feels like an appropriate song. Rhonda, what's happening, cuz? Tommy! Hey. A hundred of them things. KS, Geek, Kendra, what's happening? Latasha, Janice, Bob, Nita. Ah. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. I got one more. This is definitely a special one for me. You know what? I guess I'll celebrate. Uh, I pretty much celebrate everything. First of all, just hit the like button. Hit the like button. This is to me a song. <laughs> I think I'm wrong. Oh, this is my basketball player. You're not, you're not talking basketball with me. Standing on a corner, straight slanging rocks. Oh, man, here comes a crooked ass cop. So I dash, I ducks, and I hide behind a tree. 
sure the popos don't see me. Now my fat sack of rocks, hell yeah, I stuffed them. Police on my draws, I had to pause, and yeah, I still don't trust them. Now my game is tight, tight as hell is my game. Easy E, CPT, or Eric Wright, it's all the same. Now those my trip on how I stack my grip. I got to have it, yeah. For the love of this stupid sucker. I'm almost ready. Give me just a moment. Who are Ricky Wine in the mixtape? You feel me? Yeah. <clears throat> First, let me hop out the motherfucking Porsche. I don't want to hit that ass. Don't see like a horse. I be ballin' on this niggas. Got me feeling like sports. Dash got so much wood. I could build me a fort. Paint too many things. I ain't done yet. I'm the king of this shit. Crowned by the toilet. Pull up on your homie, I ain't talking dice. Walking 
to your function on point. I'm like a sniper. My girl bad like days low, so don't try. Deflection, now you on with homeboy. You ain't ready. ready. Ten times sharper than Michael Marvel said it. Been, been, been about the money. I ain't worried about the fame. About to have everybody saying who is Ricky Wayne. That me. Yo, what up? This your boy Trey Chaney, better known as Poop from the hit series The Wire. And when I'm in town, I'm rocking with the truth. Hey, put the hundreds in the chat, bro. This was hard fucking work switching, bro. Fuck y'all. Throw it up, throw it up. Watch it all fall out. Pull it up, pull it up. That's how we ball out. Throw it up, throw it up. Watch it all fall out. Pull it up, pull it up. That's how we ball out. Strip clubs and dollar bills. Patron shots gonna get a refill. Strippers going up and down that pole. Four o'clock and we ain't going home. Money make the world go round. Fans make your girl go down. Not more where that came from. But look at your eyes, I know you want some. Oh, oh, oh. All I see is signs. All I see is dollar signs. Oh, I'm a man, money, money, I'm a man. Throw it, throw it up, watch it fall up from the sky. Throw it up, throw it up, watch it all fall out. Throw it up, throw it up, throw it up. that's how we ball out. Throw it up, throw it up, watch it all fall out. Throw it up, throw it up, that's how we ball out. 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 That leg cost a hundred bills. Gold all up in my grill. Who cares how you hate us feel? Call Jay up and close the deal. My fragrance on and they love my smell. So who cares about what I spend? My pockets even they never end. I'm going done with all my friends. Oh no what? All I see is dollar signs. Money on my mind. Money, money on my mind. Okay, I feel better. I feel better now. Now I can go to work. I don't know why I can't. Now that I got that out of my system. Now I got that out of my system, I feel better. I feel better. I don't know why I came in this club with you, girl. Don't know why I came in with these diamonds on my chain. Surrounded by bad bitches, I can't keep them out my face. Is it cause a nigga handsome and wealthy? Is it cause a nigga cook like a professor? I don't know how you feel, can you tell me? I don't know how you feel, can you tell me? Um, Fuck it, who y'all want to expose first, nigga? Who, who who do y'all want to expose first, nigga? <laughs> you better been doing the motherfucking ad libs, nigga. Hold on, let's start a poll for one hundred. Hey, nigga, we got a one hundred dollar goal. <laughs> Are we gonna hit it? I guess we'll see. But we celebrate episode number one hundred. They said that we wouldn't do it, and we did. Yeah. I don't know why I came. In this club with you, girl. Don't know why I came in with these diamonds on my chain. Surrounded by bad bitches, I can't keep them out my face. Is it cause a nigga handsome and wealthy? White people in this motherfucker like, what the fuck is going on? Just nod your head and shut the fuck up. We celebrating a hundo.
I don't know how you feel. Can you tell me? Is it cause a nigga handsome and wealthy? We are kind of getting near that 10,000 number. The poll is in the chat. Leash in the cup one time. Ladies, break out the fucking Methuselahs. Bring it Methuselahs! We got all types of shit going on. Because I play college ball. I am a Division One basketball player. You're not, you're not talking basketball with me. Bring it up, Medusa! That didn't go well. It went great. But the women, fuck them hoes. God is great. Without him, I'm nothing. With him, I'm just I. Right. So great he is. If I could ever get myself out of the way. Kendra in the cut one time. Lady shall break out the motherfucking Medusa. Bring it up, Medusa! Rodney, what up, cuz? CEO, we in this thing. I guess let me check on this poll. Who who it look? Bro, y'all niggas is like. Y'all, y'all want the bitch exposed first. Hey, bro, we're not doing this. Go lay down. I just got on there. I ain't gonna lie, I'd still smash. I'm not, I'm not sure if I want to smash this version of Tiffany, though. She look extra stressed. I hope that everyone has underestimated my potential for, um, for it's just to what I like to break out the fucking but those are love. Number five, that's founder status, cuz 41 piece. Bitch, we've been blowing up. Everyone's showing up. Where were you in the beginning? I'm going to let the poll run for about another 30, 40 seconds. Vote on the poll in the chat. Shout out to everybody on the replay gang. I've been trying to keep up with the um, chapters and whatnot. I am a Division One basketball player. You're not, you're not talking basketball with me. KS in the cut one time. Ladies, break out the Methuselahs. Uh, KS, I want to formally apologize to you for Ekis. <laughs> I meant to, I've been forgetting to tell you that all week. I want to personally apologize for Ekis. That that Shay did that to you. That that was a Shay that was a Shay joint. I was watching that shit live. Chrissy was like, "Why the fuck is it?" Me and Chrissy's watching the race. The motherfucker said, and it appears somebody's at the back of the pack, and they don't have brakes. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, "That's not one of our cars, is it?" I'm like, "Oh, it probably is." Next thing you know, X was pulling off the fucking track, nigga. <laughs> I couldn't even do that but laugh. All right, let's see what the people want me to do first. They said fuck with Tiffany and Yard. I got a really good... I got a really good video about uh, old... Tiffany Henyard. Yeah, I do. But, uh, you know, unrival coverage due to unrivaled research because I got a motherfucker unrival squad. Shout out to whole entire Real Late Night crew, episode 100. I went and did a little homework myself. I did a little homework myself. Now, uh, if we can remember yesterday, Tiffany Henyard said, <laughs> Tiffany Henyard said <laughs> she ain't got nothing to do 
with that motherfucking charity, nigga. That ain't got shit to do with her. Practical nukes incoming! I found a video from the YouTube channel. Hold on, let me check and make sure what this YouTube channel is called because I don't want to mispronounce the name. This YouTube channel is called Tiffany Henyard. Okay, it's from the YouTube channel called Tiffany Henyard. And this video is from a little over a year ago. Heavenly Gracious Father, we thank you for just another opportunity to come together for an incredible cause, and that is to eradicate breast cancer, oh God. We are praying that as during this walk, uh, that we will feel your presence, and that we will be united as a people, and we trust that you the best is yet to come. We pray for those who have lost loved ones because of cancer, oh God. We pray that through our efforts, we will see their children. It's in Jesus' name we pray. See the DJ and all that shit? The DJ and everybody, nigga. I just want people to know that, hey, Tiffany and your Cares Foundation is here. We will help anybody in need. Um, we? What's all this we shit? We get some bad news in that letter back there, nigga? We, you ain't got nothing to do with this shit. I just want people to know that, hey, Tiffany Hinge, your Cares Foundation is here. We will help anybody in need. Um, it's not only just for Thorn Township. It's not only just for Dalton, but it's for the state of Illinois. So I just want to give them some kind of resources. I know we got uh, Susan G. Coleman. I got that. But you're going to get so many resources from each foundation. But there's no foundation in the state of Illinois moving like we moving and shaking, moving like we doing. Right, thanks, right. Right. Tiffany, would you like to explain that video? In that video, the, the exact same video is also uploaded on the Tiffany Cares channel. Or not Tiffany Cares channel, the uh, Thornton Township channel. The title of the video is just Tiffany Cares on Thornton Township. You know, because Tiffany Cares, nigga, what the fuck? Let me give you another reminder before we fully expose her ass in an interview that happened on Hannibal Hungry after the fucking rolling interview. And it's bad for her. We are walking all over cancer on our way to Springfield. Make sure you support the cause, support the movement. A South Suburban politician spends taxpayer dollars on a march to Springfield to promote her personal charity. But when we started asking questions, the party's over. Fox 32 and the Illinois Answers Project, part of the Better Government Association, are investigating the charitable foundation of Tiffany Hen Henyard, who is on two public payrolls as Dalton Mayor and Thornship Township Supervisor. What we found is raising serious questions about the use of taxpayers' dollars, employees, and equipment. Fox 32's Dane Placco investigates where all that money is going. Who did they just say was on that case? raising serious questions about the use of taxpayers dollars employees and equipment fox 32's dane placco investigates where all that money is going her nemesis good old dane placco nobody 
Don't know nobody know nothing. Tiffany Henyard certainly isn't shy about attracting attention. Here she is starting a Dalton Village board meeting dressed like the Wesley Snipes character in the movie New Jack City. Later punctuating her political points with the help of her own DJ. Every single resident. Pay me what Pay me you owe what me. You owe. Thank you, DJ. Henyard. You're welcome. His picture and name adorn virtually every public posting, both from Dalton, where as mayor she makes $46,000 a year, and in Thornton Township, where as the elected supervisor she collects more than $200,000 a year. But for all that money, Henyard's tenure at both has been chaotic, with firings, scandals, and a legal battle with the Dalton trustees over spending. Hey! Hey! So last fall, Henyard did something that would seemingly generate some good... <laughs> I ain't got nothing to do with this shit. The, how you coming in here hitting the Roger Rabbit and shit and you ain't got nothing to do with this motherfucker, bro? What is going on? Publicity. Helping establish the Tiffany <laughs> Henyard Cares Foundation to help breast cancer patients. And on the very day the charity was chartered, it received a huge donation, $10,000, from the Thornton Township Board. Tiffany. Y'all board gave ten thousand dollars to this motherfucker. Nigga, what's happening, cuz? Which Henyard presides over. Taxpayer money shouldn't be paid into those types of things. Stephanie Wiedemann is the former Thornton Township Chief of Staff, whom Henyard fired shortly after taking over in March of last year. Get out, bitch. Year. It almost felt like a takeover and a, a very aggressive one at that. Since her firing, <laughs> sound like some Nino Brown shit. Did you not see this bitch dressed up like Nino Brown? I expected the takeover to be hostile, nigga. Wiedemann has been documenting township spending <laughs> and says she's stunned by the taxpayer dollars funneled into Henyard's charity, especially this. We got 10 days. We're going 196 miles. Last October, Henyard led a delegation of Dalton and Thornton Township employees and political supporters on a march to Springfield to promote her breast cancer charity, which she documented on her Facebook page. We're walking through Dalton. Hi, we're in Brightwood now. We are in Godly now. We in Bloomington, baby. I can pretty much map out their entire Springfield trip on the township credit cards. <laughs> I can tell you exactly where they went, nigga. I, I can show you just by looking. That's why they, bro, shit like that is why she was like, turn them credit card receipts off. That bitch thinks she's slick. Turn them, turn them damn receipts off now. She straight told this bitch, oh, you, you think you got control. Well, guess what, bitch? Yeah. That's right, Henyard billed thousands of dollars in hotel rooms and meals during the trip to Thornton Township and Dalton credit cards. In addition, the videos show Henyard used multiple village and township vehicles owned by taxpayers to escort the caravan, including a flatbed trailer with a photographer, flying a drone, and a DJ. We got our band right here coming from Dalton, Illinois, booking all the way to Springfield. Yeah. Y'all make some money for our man, the people's yeah. man. But they didn't always. Always walk. We on motorbikes, baby. Who bought them bikes, nigga? Who bought them motorbikes, baby? At times, riding electric bikes. Yeah, I see my bike. I, I town Superman. ship supervisor. That's, it looks like a misspending of tax funds. Um, I think that's the biggest. <laughs> hey, look what it is. Snitching as usual, nigga. <laughs> Jason House always rolls up calmly to the scene to snitch. <laughs> Every time they you hear from her, and then after they cut Jason. At snitch. times, riding electric bikes. Yeah, I see my bike. I start town shit. It looks like a misspending of tax funds. Um, I think that's the biggest. That, that's the biggest concern. Don't I mean, it looks like they jacking the money off. You know, that's all. I can, it just looks like it. That's all I can say. Alton trustee Jason House has been doing battle with the mayor since she took office. Very disturbing to hear these things or to kind of see some of the receipts that. I can't wait till it come out. He fucking her, bro.
Yeah. So you been in them guts, bro. That's why she mad at you because you don't fuck her no more. Appear to be connected to it. And I think the taxpayers really deserve better than that. And then there's the merch. There's the shirt. Why not see shirts? Along the way, Henyard sold and gave away t-shirts and hoops. I just realized something. I just realized something. And Tiffany, I think the you taxpayers really deserve better than that. And then and there Tiffany, you gotta sue these niggas right now, or you're a fucking liar. <laughs> you got gotcha, bitch. Oh, I got you, bitch. I got you, bitch. I got you, bitch. It was at this moment that she knew she fucked up. Jason, aka 50 House, aka I'm telling. Right here, can somebody tell me what this is? You probably can't really read it, but you should be able to make this out. What is this right here? You ain't got nothing to do with this shit and your shit signatures on the back of these shirts, bitch. Oh, my Lord, bro. <laughs> That charity has done some shit she's trying to separate herself from, but she going to jail, nigga. She going to jail. She going to jail. She going to <laughs> nigga. Your signature's on the shirt, bitch. <laughs> oh boy, boy, boy. Here's the merch. Here's the shirt. Why not see shirts? Along. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Super Mayor. You are the great, greatest at self snitching. You are the self snitch extraordinaire, bro. The way Henyard sold and gave away t shirts and hoodies. All <laughs> here, little white bitch, take this shirt. <laughs> I got some for the little white bitches, the big white bitches. Come on over here. Come see your Super Mayor. We don't live in Dalton. We would never live there. As a matter of fact, Dad tells us to lock the doors when we drive through. <laughs> <laughs> this bitch out here campaigning this is a full-on campaign stop that she's masquerading as a charity nigga nigga she out here kissing babies and shit nigga this is a campaign bitch why are you playing like bro they give out real time over this shit i, I I know you done seen a lot of movies where the politician goes home and gets some head at the end of the movie. This ain't that movie, bitch. <laughs> I got to be the one to tell you, like, this is not that movie. You are not going home at the end of this movie getting some head. Now, Shay, why would you bring up that Tiffany Henry wants some head? We'll get to that. <laughs> Episode 100 about to be Liddy, nigga. Also available on her charity's website. A week before the trip, the township paid $17,000 for specially printed hoodies and t-shirts. But Y'all spent $17,000 on hoodies and t-shirts? Damn. I thought I just spent a lot. <laughs> LNC did not spend seventeen seventeen thousand dollars. These niggas price mastered some shirts, nigga. The shirts probably were only worth two hundred and eighty dollars, but then you got to put that price master fee on there. Don't say what they're for. I think that everything she has initiated has been something to promote her, something to get her name in household, something to get people to buy into voting for her. Hey, white bitch, you act like you can't get beat up. Like, <laughs> hey, nigga, she shot at an old black lady, nigga. You act like you can't get beat the fuck up. Nigga, you out here talking. You talking a little too loud, nigga. Stop acting like stop acting like she won't send the goons over there, nigga. She had them niggas shoot up that old lady house. What you think they gonna have to do with you? <laughs> Durston in the building. What up, cuz? <laughs> oh 
Oh, shit. It has been something to promote her, something to get her name in household, something to get people to buy into voting for her. Our investigation found at least $11,000 in public funds spent on that trip. But both Dalton and... So we up to like 40, 50 racks. <laughs> $10,000 donation, $11,000 on the trip, $17,000 on the motherfucking shirts. And Thornton Township had been slow or unresponsive to open records requests. So what was the purpose of the 10-day march to Springfield? I well, well, come on then. Uh, oh, so now you want to be Buff Elvis. Nah, no, no, no. We already have a buff Elvis. And when I see him, I'm telling him you trying to steal his shit. I'm snitching. I'm out here like Jason House, bro. When I see buff Elvis, I'm telling him. Jason House style. We done with that shit. Now he trying to be buff Elvis. I'm, bro. 2024 is just full of surprises, nigga. Nah, Kendra, I think he, nah, Kendra, I think he going for Buff Elvis. I seen Buff Elvis in person. Buff Elvis made a whole table full of boisterous drunk men shut the fuck up. And made the bitch melt all at the same time. He came over there, looked at them niggas like, y'all not fucking me up while I'm singing this shit. Looked over at the bitch, winked his eyes. She was like, huh? I was like, what the fuck just happened? This is a true story. True story, when I went to see an Elvis impersonator, it was several Elvis impersonators, and one of the niggas was buffed in the motherfucker. He benched like 280. Like, I'm telling you, before he come on stage, he's sitting off to the side with a shake weight, nigga. Just waiting for his cue. Yeah. Here it comes. <laughs> you ain't seen Elvis until you've seen buff Elvis. That's my word. Gotta keep the muscles firing. Uh, sitting there with the fast twitch, doing fast twitch exercises. <laughs> I'm about to go back to the video, but I gotta tell this the weirdest shake weight story ever, bro. Back in the day, I used to play Call of Duty like after work down there every day with like a few of my homies. And, and my cousin, bro, they used to roast the fuck out of this nigga because between rounds, we sitting in the lobby either waiting for the next round or waiting for new people to come or whatever. And all you would hear over the microphones is, <laughs> man, what the fuck is that noise? Just, at the, you, like, for a while, it was like, what? And you just, like, it was happening between rounds. You just didn't know what it was. This nigga gonna be like, oh, I didn't know y'all could hear my shake weight. This fat ass nigga, and he was a fat nigga too. This fat ass nigga in between Call of Duty rounds is sitting there with a fucking shake weight. This is the mo most fat shit I've ever, I brought. I refuse to say the name out loud because it was just some of the most fattest shit I ever. I'm like, nigga, you were sitting there playing a video game, sh doing, doing a shake weight, really acting like you working out and doing Call of Duty at the same time. That's what you're doing right now. I'll never forget that shit. <laughs> they roast the fuck out of that nigga too. I swear, I bro, I, this is a true story. I I am not in no way making this shit up, bro. This is the most outrageous shit ever. This thing just sitting there between rounds, <laughs> working out with a fucking shake weight while we play a Call of Duty. Bro. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you, bro? <laughs> yeah, exactly, Daniel. I can't even confirm or deny it was actually a shake weight. There was some shaking involved. I just hope it was with a weight. That's that's all that's all we can hope for at this point. Just I just hope it was a fucking weight. Now let me get back to my boo. Cause just cause she be stealing from y'all don't mean she be stealing from me. See the see where y'all be fucking with Tiffany is y'all know how to deal with a bitch like her. I've been done slapped the shit out of her, told her to come sit down. And she'll say, Yes, daddy. You gotta get her and her feminine. And that may require three or four RKOs. <laughs> you know, 
But you got to get her in her feminine, nigga. <laughs> But I digress. I've created a bill, uh, which we're going to speak before the Revenue Committee to give everybody $5,000 on their income tax when they file if you are suffering from cancer. A noble. Oh, so now it's 5000 Last night on the show, you said it was for 10000 See, I listen real good, bitch. I laugh and all that shit, but once I hit play again, I'm listening. You said five. You said $10,000 last night. Now it's 5000 Which one is it? Were you lying then, or are you lying now? ...goal, except the Revenue Committee wasn't meeting when the group arrived in Springfield. Hanyer did later testify at a committee hearing in Chicago, but so far nothing has come of her bill. I think I'm doing a damn good job on the So we went to a recent Thornton Township board meeting to ask Hanyard some questions about all that spending. I've never, ever been um, bitter to the news. Max, this is my olive branch to the media. Can you guys reach out to us and ask us our opinion? You see how that nigga grabbing her arm like, shut up, bitch? I told you, she don't listen to nobody. She's sitting here trying to talk shit to the news. This is the first time she talks shit to Dane Placco. And I got video evidence that when she was starting to talk shit to Dane Placco, a nigga right next to her was like, shut up. Some watch questions that nigga, about all that Watch spending. her right arm. I've never, ever been um, bitter to the news. Max, this is my olive branch to Come the on, media. Baby, Can you guys up. reach out to shut us up. and ask us our opinion before shut you post? I would appreciate it. And so we did. I want to ask you a few questions. Okay. Yeah, what up, Dane? <clears throat> this is their first face-to-face -face meeting, nigga. What's happening, Dane? Hey, shout out Dane Placco in the building. Hey, Fox 32. You know what? I think I might reach out to Dane Placco, see if I can get an interview. I want I want to interview Dane Placco. The, the journalism work he's done on this case. Bro, again, I'm the nigga that talks the biggest shit about the local media. Dane Placco been on this bitch head, and they don't be on nobody's head like this. Now, I know y'all tell me because it's a black bitch. So be it. <laughs> I can only get on Dane if he was going after a black bitch that didn't do nothing. <laughs> I got I got to talk to the boy Dane Placco, bro. But Henyard wasn't anxious to talk about her charity. Why did you and the, and the board vote bro, to get your no, nah, I got to get a drop from Dane Placco. And this is Dane Placco, and you're watching The Real Late Night Crew. Nigga, they'll watch one stream and fire his dog ass. Nigga, you did a drop for that show? You fired. Foundation, $10,000. I'm the face of the foundation. My name is Nowhere, sir. Oh! So now you the face. Face. You're the face of the foundation. I thought you had nothing to do with that foundation, bitch. It wasn't anxious to talk about her charity. Why did you and the, and the board vote to give your foundation $10,000? I'm the face of the foundation. My name is Nowhere, sir. Say again. I, my, I'm the face. You're the, the face. face. What was the purpose of going to Springfield? Thank you, guys. Hey, she doesn't have any more comments, guys. No, we're going to talk. She we're doesn't have talk. any more comments. Thanks, no. guys. Well, who is this big ass... This nigga look like motherfucking Sandman from fucking Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Oh my Cause I know y'all niggas be thinking I'm lying. Y'all niggas always think I'm lying. This ain't that nigga. This ain't the same nigga. You gonna tell me with a straight fucking face right now, this ain't the same nigga. I mean, it, the, the, the one on the right be working out. One on the left do not. That ain't the same nigga. Y'all got it, bro. That's why I don't like telling y'all shit. That's why I like keeping shit to myself, bro. That's Keith Freeman, whom Henyard hired at both Dalton and Thornton Township and was...
can't make it up. <clears throat> Uncanny resemblance, allegedly. But why is Keith Freeman relevant? Keith Freeman, what is your big ass doing here? Like, why, why are we talking about this charity that she ain't got nothing to do with? Why are we even talking about you? Because obviously she ain't got nothing to do with it. Neither do you, right? Right? Part of her Springfield walk. Look at Keith. Keith, baby! Freeman also filed paperwork for the charity bearing Henyard's name. Why are you using public money for your personal charity? <laughs> This is when them niggas found out that all white people wasn't afraid of them. She's surrounded by all niggas, and they ain't don't give a fuck, Keith, nigga. Keith, baby! Freeman also filed yeah, paperwork whatever, bitch. for What's the charity the money, bearing Henyard's name. Why are you using public money for your personal charity? $17,000. And with that, her security detail hustled Henyard upstairs and blocked the staircase with a table. <laughs> they rushed her up a staircase and then blocked the stairs with a table running from Dane Placco. She got all this security and they running from Dane Placco, nigga. <laughs> Dane Placco low-key a goat, nigga. I ain't gonna hold you. So we tried asking another employee who went on that trip. You went down to Springfield and what were you hoping to do? <laughs> He's like, nigga, don't even ask me. Nigga, Michael Black's and daddy is not trying to hear this shit. Yeah, it's the people that handles that. I'm not the one to handle that. I was just riding the bike. We need... Bike you was riding was like $1,000, though. We need more officers on the streets. We need our streets repaved. Um, so to spend that kind of money on a charitable event or supposed charitable event... Allegedly. ...really doesn't seem like the best use of tax dollars. We also sent Henyard a detailed list of questions about her charity and how the money is being used. We've not yet heard back. Dane Placco, Fox 32, Chicago. Dane Placco, I'm that nigga, and I've been on her head for four years. Fox 32. Back to you. Tiffany's sitting around, I wish this nigga would just die. Nigga, Dane Placco ain't going nowhere, no time soon. <laughs> You wishing for the wrong shit, you dirty bitch. Dane Plack, don't let that white hair fool you, nigga. That nigga's healthy as a horse, nigga. He ain't going nowhere, nigga. You tried it. Here's where this shit gets very fucking saucy, nigga. I know that she likes pre Oh, right, we'll get to that part. So, we're going to watch his interview with this chick that worked there, right? So, li listen to how, shout out to Hannibal's Hungry. Watch how he, this clip he got of Tiffany. He just, I don't know if he knew the woman. Did he know the woman before she came on? I got it just, it was so bad. Before we went to the break, I talked about the, again, this this charity. And the Illinois Attorney General's office, this is what, this is from a CBS affiliate there, says that the accusation comes at the same time the Illinois Attorney General's office told Henry's charity multiple times in recent months to stop improperly soliciting donations because it had not registered with the state as required by law. Uh, and, and you said that's not your charity. Correct. Were you ever... For real, though? For real? So the, the super mayor that puts her name and likeness to everything that she... Everything she touches, it has to have her name on it, right? The $1 million giveaway, all the billboards, all the pamphlets, the, the podcast that she's going to be talking about later on. It says Tiffany cares. It has her big face on it. No, I don't know what you're talking about. No, what? What? What, what charity? What are you talking about? So that was it. so. Show the video here. I'm trying to understand this here. So this is a video of the of you marching with the charity. <laughs> so what is this? <laughs> I think they were a little extra hard on Roland. Roland, I don't think Roland. How Roland get tied up in this? Somebody call Roland and ask for a favor. 
Roland just didn't know how dirty she really was. telling you is we literally walked to Springfield to create a bill to help anybody that suffered from cancer, whether it's the village of Dalton, Thorn Township, and then I increased it to the state of Illinois. And that bill will help people by giving them $10,000. But you just said 5000 in the other shit. Now it's magically 10000 You can just tell the bitches be making the shit up as she go. She don't remember none of the lies she say. Tata was having, blessing, blessing was happening. Man, we got to get plaque on the beat squad. We got to hurry up and get this bread. Because, cause bro, Mish, you can put him to work. Mish, you can, you can have plaque at your disposal. And that's a bill that we actually are initiating, and we're still working on it. When I went through the Republican states, the Republican areas... We'll put, we'll put plaque on the streets. We didn't have any issue. Everybody was on board because everybody is suffering from cancer or knows someone that passed or is actually going through it. So that was the whole purpose of the walk, to basically bring awareness and bring people together. That's what the whole purpose of it is. But if you had, so there were folks with signs saying Tiffany Henry Cares Foundation. Who was that? What, what do you mean? It's everybody. Everybody was there. No, no, no. What I'm saying is... Yeah, no. She, you know what the fuck he's saying. It was everybody. No, what he's asking it, bitch, <laughs> is who made them signs? Who had them signs made? That's what he's asking. What is the Tiffany Henyard Cares of Cares Foundation? You said it's not affiliated with you at all. Correct. Well, what is it? So someone made up a foundation. They named it after me, and they like my work that I do in the community, and it's called Tiffany Henyard Cares. Okay, so that's what she says. Okay, so let's let's play this video real quick. A shout out to Sherry. We have some documents as well. I just checked the email. So she said, I don't know, man. Someone just, someone loved me so much and they see what I've been doing. She is the Tiffany, I am the dream handyard, right? They looked at her like, man, she's great. She got, she made this really cool ice rink and she's doing all these things. Look, look at that Tahoe. We're going to make it in her name. She's so amazing. So let's see, let's see that that actually is true. I'm really, really big on, as dear to my heart, it's a real big on Cancer Foundation. I have created Tiffany Henry uh, Cares Foundation. What was that? That actually is true. I'm really, really big on, as dear to my heart, it's a real big on Cancer Foundation. I have created Tiffany Henry uh, Cares Foundation. <laughs> There's a video of you saying you created the foundation, bitch. This shit's it, bro. This is about a done daughter with you. Let's repeat that again. Let's repeat. She <laughs> said, and, and Roland, I don't know what you're talking about. Someone did it for me. Let's repeat the last the last 10 seconds. I'm really, really big on as dear to my heart. It's a real big on cancer foundation. I have created Tiffany Henry uh, Cares Foundation. And what that is. It was that who's speaking? That's 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 Tiffany Hangard, right? She you hear her talking about she created it. So what what is she talking about now? Why Roland didn't do any research on this? Cause he probably got it. Look, I go kill Roland for that. And here's why I'm not edible. He probably got this last second. It was again, I was saying last night, I was like, Roland didn't even know how big of an interview he had. If he had known, he'd have did last night totally different. He didn't really even know who this bitch was. What happened was one of her people reached out, I'm sure, to one of his people and got a favor done. So, and, you know, they telling Roland, look, we need you to do this interview, blah, blah, blah. Okay. He didn't expect it to be, he expected it to just kind of be like, we helping... We helping this fucking uh, mayor get some national spotlight. Because I'm sure they've done that before. I'm sure they've had some mayors and shit on that show helping them get some national exposure. So it wasn't like it was out of the ordinary for a mayor to pop on there like that for Roland. And Roland's just not that good at his job anyway. But he would have been better than that. I ain't, I ain't going to hate on him like that. He should have did more time to research what was going on. Tales is helping everybody within the 17 municipalities with services such as our web services and resources. 
such as would you need help paying for chemo, radiation, your medicine, your wigs, your <coughs> prosthetic, um, your breasts, uh, things of that nature, even helping you with housing. If you cannot live in Chicago uh, to benefit from this foundation, it's strictly for uh, people that live in the 17 communities. Uh, we are doing a cancer walk October 4th. Let's okay. hear what she said. Uh, and we are doing a cancer walk October 4th. Now they are doing the cancer walk. We. Um, <laughs> so were you ever? So that was so show show the video. So hold on. So let's just get to this interview, bro. So first of all, I want you to look at this right here. This is who. Corporate name. This is the paperwork. Cor corporate name. Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation. Register agent. Keith Freeman. Kamal Woods, Pamela Earhart, Carmen Carlisle, William Moore, and Cheryl Schranz. You have heard all of these people speak. These are like all of Tiffany's henchmen on this paperwork. And their plan was, we all go have our name on it. And she ain't. And she's going to get to say she's not part of it because her name ain't on it. She pretended like she don't even know who run it. You go look at the paperwork. She literally is the boss of everybody on the list. Either way, it's you. <clears throat> this is your foundation. You lied, you lied to Mr. Rowland. How dare you? The Thornton Township put... $10,000. <clears throat> Y'all said, hold on, wait a minute. Fuck that shit. Y'all spent damn near $3,500 in casino tours? $37,000 to John's catering company? What the fuck was John making? Was it weed and hoes to go with the meal? $632 at M&J's breakfast house. What the fuck kind of breakfast was y'all eating for six hundred dollars? It's like the cheapest fucking thing to eat. And who is ZLE Productions? Them niggas done hit y'all for fifteen hundred. She be doing the most, nigga. Let's get to this fucking interview, nigga. That, that, that receipt fucked my world up. I, will, I wasn't quite ready to see that foolishness. Paperwork is this. Cloud, I am the former. Yeah, she, I know she's ready to say what she has to say here. So... Before we jump in, let everyone know who you are. Well, I am Dr. Nikita Nietzsche Cloud. I am the former chief of staff to Mayor Henyard. And what happened to her? Yeah! And uh, I am a public relations professional, so I do have to tip my hat to the Whitley Agency who handled this PR for Tiffany. Tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, from from, from the beginning, I thought I, I thought he was going to do where... Go to Roland about, Martin, like he always do. Yeah, I thought he's going to set up, you know, kind of a setup, hey, who you are and what your responsibilities are and how much you get. And then I thought some more aggressive questioning, would, and it's never happened. Yeah, so just from knowing Tiffany, right, one of the things I can almost guarantee you is the only way she took that interview is if there was approved questioning. Hashtag Shay was right. I th bro, that's easy money. She been hiding like a motherfucker. There was no way she was coming on anybody's platform doing any type of talking unless she can guarantee what was brought up. While well, she was pissed when she found out Jason House came and she was pissed they showed that video like that to her. So usually what she do is she put out a disclaimer like, hey, I'll do this interview, but I can't say this or I can't say that or you can't ask me this. So you have to think about it from a person that literally do the same thing you do. So and I'm not saying it's right. I'm not even saying it's ethical. But if you look at it like that, 
Nobody has interviewed Tiffany. The only other person who has interviewed Tiffany was Ben Bradley, which was, you know, media gold. Let's just which was a disaster. And that short two sentence placo interview. Just be honest. She now, did not look good. <laughs> she did not look good at all. Now, Roland Martin is the only person. So it takes a person like myself, right? Or for her, in her case, her publicist, who already have the relationship with Roland Martin, right? And they'll yeah. say, hey, listen, I want you to interview her. I'll give you this exclusive. She's hot right now. I've been in this shit 20 years, nigga. I'll tell you. Right? Very, She's yeah. real estate when it comes to this. So it's like, well, but you can't ask her about this. If you notice, like I didn't, I, I kind of look past what he said or what he mm. didn't say. I looked at what he didn't ask. And none of those questions highlighted her misappropriation of funds. He did yep. not deep dive into her salary. I mean, or the salary part. So like she blatantly lied about the salary. For example, I know she mentioned like 224,000 and 50,000 at, okay. So what she said was she's part-time. That's a lie. Let's start there. But then yeah. she mentioned that. And I'm yeah, I'm like, how the fuck you make that much money part-time, bitch? I'm going to clarify that in a second because I know some people are going to say, no, she's part-time, but I'll clarify that. First yeah. thing she said was she get $224,000 as Thornton Township supervisor. Is that... Shit, I wish I was always right. Life would have been way easier. That right? That's a yes and no. Because where she left out was she get a stipend, she get expense accounts, she get those $600 a day per diems. So real... Whoo! 600 a day per diem? Nigga, we eating at the strip club every day then, nigga. On me. Wings and fries and bitches, nigga. 600 a day? Realistically, she's making well over $300,000. From the mm -hmm. township alone. Now, we, we mosey on over to the village of Dalton. Is she making $50,000 a year? She's actually around 47. Yes. But what she did fail to miss to mention is she's also the liquor commissioner. With I'm losing my motherfucking mind, man. So you got a whole nother job too. Uh, I'm sure you're not the alcoholic commissioner for free. <laughs> this bitch, she wild, bro. <laughs> this bitch is hiding a whole ass job position, nigga. Which comes with a different salary. So she's almost knocking at that 100000 a year at the village of Dalton as well. This bitch is making 400 bands. <laughs> Hold on, nigga. This bitch is the Mayor Stormy Daniels, nigga. <laughs> this bitch got several streams of income. Boss bitch shit, nigga. 400000 a year. Scamming, as usual. You know what I mean? <laughs> Tends to be scamming, but... Nigga, she's the political... The uh the political Stormy Daniels, nigga. So um, what she did. Yeah, that's how she got them bars shut down fast. She the alcohol commissioner, nigga. Did was she did a lot of wordplay, right? And not even good at this wordplay. So I can tell from the beginning of the conversation, she had a set amount of questions that they Girl, what up, kid? They prepped her on. But then you notice when she started to get frustrated, she went rogue. Like for example, I took some notes. Oh, let's hear them. She kept lying and she said that she kept taking shots at like Trustee Belcher, right? And, you know, she said a few things about her. She took some other lies, like the charity. Girl, that's your charity. Stop. <laughs> like, come on, nigga. <laughs> like, anybody who's halfway paid attention to this Henry story, <laughs> nigga, that's your charity. Stop it. Stop the cap, nigga. Stop it. It was like, what's going on? Yeah, like everyone that's on the charity, you pay at some capacity or you sleep with. Let's just. What was that? Girl, that's your charity. Stop. It was like, what's going on? Yeah, like everyone that's on the charity, you pay at some capacity or you sleep with. You know, Rick is so wild and has went so far off the, the meter. It's shit that I can't even tell, talk, tell you on TV. I mean, you know, I, for the sake of our friendship, you know what I'm saying? 
I, I'm not even going to bring it up. But trust me, he's went there. He, he, he has went where it's like, yo, Rick, man, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? You done took this shit too far. And his response is like this. There's no such players. Darkness. Let's go to the abyss, nigga. <laughs> I'm not with it, man. I don't want to go to the abyss, man. You know what I'm saying? Rick wants to go to the abyss. In fact, he dwells in the abyss. Rick James dwells in the abyss, okay? And he, and he wants company sometimes, you know? And, and for some reason, he likes to reach out for me. Whenever I'm around, when he, when he wants to go there, he will reach out for me to try to take me to the abyss with him. And I'm not with it, man. I'm not with it. And that's when we end up, you know, tussling or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I told you episode 100 was going crazy. This bitch says she fucking niggas. And the feds are going to find out. Fonnie Willis didn't think the feds would find out. She's like, I am the feds, nigga. She just alleged that Tiffany Henry is fucking some of the niggas around her. Girl, that's your charity. Stop. It <laughs> was like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, like everyone that's on the charity, you pay at some capacity or you sleep with. Let's just be honest. So yeah. for you to get on there on a national platform, so I'm going to look at the positive. The reality of the matter is, just like you was on, I was on, I know for a fact several major news publications were on because I personally invited them and we were on a chat together talking about it. That being said, she screwed herself. So if just to say a federal agent that we know are all out here in the village of Dalton, they're Absolutely. watching the what as well, and they watched her lie about the foundation. I mean, so what is the point? If it's not your foundation, you spent, what, $75,000 to take a walk for this foundation that you say is really not yours? Come on now, sis. Did you really utilize Thornton Township resources for this foundation that you say is not yours? I mean, it was full of contradictions. And then with Roland Martin, that was just the lack of journalistic integrity in the entire Shit. matter. I don't want to say, I'm going to say allegedly. Because now, here's where, up- here's where she's right. <clears throat> here's where he lacked a lot of journalistic integrity on some real shit. Nigga, I can't interview somebody for you last minute, and I don't know anything about them. I can't do it. I can do it tomorrow. Give me a chance to catch up on these motherfuckers. So, Roland got to have enough integrity to turn it down. So, I will say that. There's a new poll in the chat. Off that perhaps maybe a little bread was buttered. I'm just saying. When you see, I've seen Roland Martin interviews go there. Go after people, back and forth arguments, screaming matches, which is custom to how our political commentary is supposed to be a lot of fireworks, mm-hmm. people going back and forth. It seems the energy was off. Again, I- but the flip side, I'm gonna give him a little. Ki- I'm gonna. I'm gonna give him a little credit. Let's mm-hmm. give him a little credit here. He still allowed her to get all of that rope and hang herself. <laughs> because, like, it was one part when he asked- Thank you, Ma. Make sure you look at the positives. Because, bro, yeah, he could have went harder at her. But damn, bro, he went hard enough to where she really was fucking up. As he said, listen, so you're saying this is Hit not your like charity. Button. She said, no, it's not, sir. And he played, look at this video. You, you got the T-shirt on. And... He was like, okay. I mean, because at the end of the day, you can yeah. utilize this. He has a public platform. We can literally take that and utilize that as proof. She can't take it down like she would do if, let's say, you know, it was a Village of Dalton, you know, page, things like that. She can't do that because it's yeah. his page. And he's not going to he's not gonna remove it because he did numbers. In my opinion, was that sideway disrespect of Jason House, right? right? Talk about that. That was... So he was a little harder on Jason House, but it, but here's the thing though, and here's where I can feel like Roland was like he wasn't supposed to really go hard on Tiffany. When Jason said like when he really J Jason down was like, so you're telling me that this happens and this happens and this happens, and he was like, yep. And Roland just kind of moved on from that because it ain't nothing he could say. 
like you said, be nice to her, kid gloves to her, but Jason House, he's interrupting. It was it was such a big difference in how he was mm-hmm. speaking to what were you thought about that? Yeah, he even rolled his sleeves up and did that. Outrageous. Yeah, he did. Didn't it get him, didn't him at the same time. He was quick to kind of just move on and move past it, kind of make it seem like he was doing the fair and balance. Okay, talk to the mayor, let's talk about the talk to the main trustee that he, he's having some beef with, she's having beef with, and then it just it was just it was cringe to say the least. The least. It was definitely cringe. It was cringe. But I think that Jason held his own. He he maintained his integrity. He handled those questions with poise. He was accurate, although he did not get an opportunity to say everything, I, I can assume, because I saw how he kept getting cut off, kept getting cut off. And that's honestly when I started thinking that perhaps, you know, a deal was made or even, you know, pre-approved questions, because I have seen that happen on several occasions. And just working with Tiffany, it was like, um, I know that, you know, I tried to get her press or i have gotten her a, a feature in Essence magazine. I got her- you got this bitch in essence her feature in black enterprise and she was the exact same way like if they didn't ask only these questions and this is before all of yeah. you know the scandal and all of these th- do you really think it was and i'm not saying that she like knows but maybe it's always been shit from jump Things because had I known that she was this individual, I would have by no means gotten her these, you know, this coverage. But I know that she likes pre-approved questions. I know that she fears the media. That being said, I already know that, you know, he had an agreement, right? So mm-hmm. agreement aside, though, yeah. agreement aside, but he has an obligation, right? He has an obligation as a journalist to do the right thing. He has a journalistic obligation to accurately report the news in my personal opinion he did not do that he was very yeah but that's subjective this nigga was on youtube it's like saying that i have all nigga i don't owe the journalism i don't owe journalists or journalism shit i do this shit my way the honest way that's not an honest nigga and you work for her you ain't an honest chick either again I'm not giving y'all this whole, what y'all not going to do is be like pointing to Tiffany as a reason for me to believe that y'all all all good. Uh, Case by case. Very careful. He was very strategic. And to me, it appeared. Um, Real quick. I forgot I wanted to announce this. I want to announce it during the show. Um, I got this thing here. I don't even, y'all can't see it because it's a green band. It has a name Sutton Hall on it. Uh, One of the youth. Members of my wife's church uh, that I received this to give special prayer for all week for a big weekend they have coming up. So I wanted to make sure I did it during my show for real and not during my outro when ain't nobody even fucking here. So big shout out to Sutton Hall. One time for the one time. All right, let's get back to it that there were pre-approved questions that he did not want to answer. He wanted to respect her opinion because she was face-to-face. Whereas Jason was online yeah. and he's a man and he went harder with him. Now, also in a perfect world, I get what he was saying. I'm just being fair. When he said that, you know, the board has the majority, but where he's missing out on, the board surely has the majority. Mm-hmm. But she has the the directors, you know, she has the staff, she has all of this. So if she's strong arming these people, and I know for a fact that she is, I know for a fact she tell the directors, the employees, if they comply, they're fired. That's illegal than a motherfucker. And so that's how when people go, well, they got a majority, how are they losing? It's like, well, they win, and then they tell the motherfucker that's in charge of the money, all right, do this. And then the mayor comes in and goes, if you do that, nigga, I'm firing you. I know for a fact she does this. So he doesn't know that nor did he take the time to do the research because all you have to do is put in on Google Tiffany Henry's name and click on news. All of your facts are there. Or I shouldn't have had to call you to invite Jason House on the show. You get what I'm saying? Ooh, so you was the reason Jason House got on the show. Hey, were you the truth for that, girl? 
to them to say, hey, I got the mayor on the show. Let's get Jason House on. Because you got to keep it fair. You got to keep it balanced. When I was on Anton, I incur Anton Daniels, shout out. I encouraged him to reach out to Henry and say, that nigga ain't got enough juice. They get her on the show. Fact check. If I'm lying, go ahead. Come back behind me. Drop your receipts. Or better yet, let's get us on a show together. I would love to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tiffany Henry. Yeah. Because she probably would not want to do that. Like you said, she wants maximum control mm -hmm. over everything that's going on. So, it, yeah, I, I just felt like with Roland, he just, it looked like it was just, he was just being naive. He was he, being nice. I don't know what's going on, and I'm just trying to get all sides here. And what do you mean you guys can't work this out? Have you talked to the, you know, the, the senator or whatever? You talked to higher ups to kind of let's just stop this nonsense. Oh, don't you like you said have the majority? Uh, other staff reports, like like you said, how said it? All staff reports are directly going to the mayor's office. There's been instances where employees have been faced disciplinary actions, exter uh, termination. They're getting paid more than they ever been paid before. And and that's I want to know who Tiffany's fucking. What it is. You said it right there. You got to look at it like this. Exactly, Tata. Right? You, okay, example. And I am so sorry. I'm just going to put people out there, and I did not do that before. You got to put them out there. Look at who is in her circle. If anybody, okay, first of all, Keith Freeman, right? <sighs> Y'all going to get this big ass nigga locked up, nigga. Why are y'all trying to get this big ogre motherfucker locked up? Night, Chadrick. Y'all trying to get this big oversized ogre locked the fuck up. What's wrong with y'all, bro? Leave this nigga alone. For yeah. example, Keith Freeman. I mean, this is allegedly, but we know that it's public information. He has financial issues. Keith, do you have financial issues? I'm broke, nigga. I'm broke. So if you're dangling a few hundred thousand dollars around him, he said it even in a video, some some church or religious video he did himself. We showed that video on here. That he and his wife was dealing with some financial troubles or Correct. something yeah. like that. These are all his words. No one is mincing his words. So I know that when he was at other municipalities, that actual position where he's the village administrator at a hundred thousand a year, he was not making that. Right, he was making half of that because other municipalities. You get in her circle, nigga. You get pay raises. We're not paying that, right? So now you get a hundred thousand a year, and that's why it's hard for a lot of these niggas to really turn on her and really fear losing their jobs because it's not like they don't feel like they can't get another job. It's like, nigga. I was making $50,000 a year. Now I work for this bitch making almost 200. Uh, the math ain't hard for a lot of people. Me, man, I ain't taking that all that type of pay for shit for that shit because then I'll be caught up in a federal investigation. And then she becomes supervisor 3 months later. She hits you with another 65 70 grand a year so now you know he's at almost 200k so he's living comfortable he could probably pay a bill or two or buy a car get it repoed or whatever you know hey i mean i'm broke nigga i'm broke yeah, but but you know what i'm saying and then you have let's just say a what do you call that guy the deputy chief of police i mean yeah. he has a background a mile long yeah. Right. So now he has what's what, you know, like, OK, so now he's getting his promotions in any reasonable town. No reasonable, you know, municipality would promote someone with such a background. Now, let <laughs> she's talking about that one cop, that police chief nigga that be up there lying like a motherfucker trying to go at Kiana and shit. That nigga got all the smoke from Kiana, but don't really say shit to Jason. That nigga. She said basically what he got promoted to police chief in Dalton when nobody else would barely even have this nigga. Yeah, his, history, yeah, his history is pretty, pretty mm -hmm. spotty to say the least. And, yeah. And he's never done anything to me personally. Right. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying just, you know, he, he's given shady. He's giving, you know, a little bit. Of, I'll do whatever it takes to keep my job. You know, I saw some for sure nigga. videos where he was harassing a woman during a traffic stop. I you saw the same 
Yeah, so exactly. yeah, you got that, right? I'm trying to think of what I gotta find that. Her, her her assistant. And then she hired her as the trustee at the township. She's also her landlord. I don't know if you guys know that. Wow. So it's kind of kind of hard to combat the combat the person who literally gives you your roof. She going to prison, nigga. This bitch is Nino Brown. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, I do. So, you know, you have that. And it's a few others. So what she usually do is she preys on the, I don't mean this disrespectfully, but she preys on the weak. Yeah. So money is money. And and money can, I mean, th that's the whole point of corruption, mm -hmm. right? Money is extremely powerful resource that you can use to control people, manipulate people. Yeah. And if you never made that kind of money before, you don't, you know, you will. Some of us, hopefully not most of us, but they will, you will do some some shady stuff. And I think with her, it's obvious. But again, it's obvious to everyone. But Roland, Roland has not been on a YouTube checker. He did not type in Tiffany Hager's name at he all. Couldn't have. He couldn't have. He had to find out about interviewing her like half an hour before he did it. Yeah. And you know, so I mean, you got to look at it like this too. You know, it's you know, if you if you're a good publicist, you have relationships with journalists. And that's just the reality of the matter. So if you ask, you know, that, "Hey, can you do my girl a solid? Can you get her on the show? That's the girl that's been in the news. You know, she's all over. You're going to definitely get the hits." He like, "Yeah, let's get her on today." He probably, you know, whoever he probably had on there originally because if you notice, he didn't promote her before today. So right. he probably had someone else. They fell off. Some and he don't even know. Had he spent one day promoting that motherfucker, that's how you knew he didn't know. If he spent one day promoting it, one day, he, bro, he he did a million. He would have did a million on that interview. One knows somebody. He did a solid. He got on the show. Didn't get a chance to vet. But things I know about Ron Roland Martin, he's not done. He's going to answer. Because I'll give you an example. This nigga's live stream. As soon as he got off the air, it was at 40,000 views. His. He had more views than Roland had getting off the air. It's because once the, you know, like he see your video or he see, you know, Sean Burns or, you know, Anton, and then, or even the news. When he starts seeing that, he doesn't like that pressure, right? Because he's been in this game a long time and he's even been under pressure before. He's yeah. definitely going to answer. So I don't think that that was it. I don't think we've heard the last of that when it comes to him. So, you know, I don't really, I think that he is going to answer. I did send him, so he is in receipt of some videos. I did send him some, you know, some fact checks. Sent him. So let's just see what happens there. What was the other thing? That's interesting, Roland. So now you on the clock, in my opinion. Now that I know that somebody has sent you some stuff, somebody that can actually get it to you. Now I'm waiting to see what your reaction is going to be. Because this ain't just like some random nigga in a chat somewhere emailing you. Nah, this, again, this bitch got Jason House on after. She got juice, nigga. Tiffany thought she got rid of all this bitch juice when she fired her. Nope. <laughs> Not by far. You know, the, the going back and forth about the salary with her lying there. Like, she, all she did, as she say her haters... Yeah. All she did was give her haters more content in, in her words. You know, that's the way yeah. I see it. So I don't look at the, the interview with Roland Martin as quote unquote, um, for, to the residents I'm speaking to. I don't look at yeah. that as a loss whatsoever. I think that, that she will probably think it was a slam dunk. That's just, you know, the narcissistic behavior that yeah. she has. However, I do not look at it as a loss as it relates to the residents of Dalton getting justice. I yeah. just don't see it as that at all whatsoever. I see it as what she did was she further gave the yeah. residents of Dalton, the authorities or whoever else that, you know, need this information. I really think that she just gave it to them on a on a platter. And yeah. I'm happy. I, I think it was a slam dunk. I think Jason House did very well. I'm happy he did not lose his school because I probably would have snapped. But again, that's why I'm not an elected official. And I get, Me neither, right? I can it's, say it's, what, and that's what you need. With it. <laughs> you need that. As a politician, you need a lot of mm -hmm. patience dealing with all types Tiffany, of things. And Tiffany, this is going to hurt your feelings. She looking way prettier than you, especially in the face right now. 
she ain't stressed out. She look like she been getting a lot of sleep. But yeah, so before we like she she low key look like she's happy that Tiffany fired her. Cause she'd be caught up in this shit too. Head out for a second, at least at least yeah. in terms of talking about uh, the legal battles. So she says she won 24 cases, but you know, like even House said there's there's still it's not even still, 24 cases. There isn't 24 cases. There's still five lawsuits that are still either still it's still pending. Like there's still stuff like what this is the is lines? Where's she getting? Yeah. Let me explain that. So what yeah. happens is let's say, for example, you are suing Tiffany because she came and cut all the wires to your home, right? And or she okay. cut off the street lights that on your on your block. Let me just give okay. that example. So she cut off the street lights and you get robbed and you blame her, right? And you say, I'm gonna sue you. So I go to court because the lights are still off on the block. So you go in and say, I need a sooner court date. So you file an emergency motion to get the court date seen before the judge within three to five days, right? Yeah. And then you go to court within three to five days, and then the judge say, Well, I don't really see this as an emergency. So your temporary restraining order to stop her from turning the lights off on my block has been denied, but we will see your case on the regular scheduled court date, right? <laughs> now she won one, one half of one half of a motion. <laughs> this bitch won one tiny part of a motion, and this bitch is like, yep, I won the case. <laughs> So both fighters have been given their instructions in the dressing room. Do you understand your instructions? Do you have any questions? I won. Hey, she's taking that. Well, he said that he can't see our case now as a win. And that's no, not yeah. a win. That's what he's saying is when he deny, he's denying the TRO, which is a temporary restraining order. Girl, you ain't even got to do all of this. Nigga, we not stupid. She won one motion, and this bitch, and this bitch is like, I won, I won the whole case. Versus the case itself, all the cases are still ongoing. Nothing has been quote unquote, with maybe the exception of the um, what the recall, and I think the bank account information, which is still, in in my opinion, is kind of ongoing as well. Don't yes, quote me on that, but she's never really won a case. Now we know what happened with the recall. That was a technicality. Yeah, so it really I was. mean, it Other is than that, twenty. Yeah. Cause she, yeah, she got her ass kicked in that recall, but they technically couldn't do it. <laughs> That's how she won that. Or no, does not make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. But another thing I want to point out that she mentioned that about, and I, I have this written down too. She said that that salary thing, you know, where the salary goes down to forty thousand dollars. Yeah, I remember. Was, yeah. I mean, no, what what was it? Is it forty? No, twenty five thousand. She stated that that was already put in place. No, that's not true as well. There what? was something where the setup. So basically, for example, Frank Zuccarelli, the previous supervisor who sadly passed. R.I.P. Frank passed away year before last. He had been in that position for 35 years. So quite naturally, his salary. So now I get why she reset it, even for what it was supposed to probably go to. See, what happened was Tiffany, what, what they did was cap it so... Okay, so he every year he's getting his normal raise, which means his salary's just going up. What they try, what they did was try to put a law in place. So, all right, so he's at two hundred and twenty-four thousand. Well, the next mayor is getting two hundred and twenty-four thousand. They're not going to get what he should have gotten in th this year. Does that make sense? So he got two hundred twenty-four thousand his last spot, but then next year he was supposed to get two hundred and forty thousand. So next year when the new mayor come in, the new mayor ain't getting that. The new mayor's getting the last shit. Then she comes in behind that and goes, and the mayor after me is getting 25000 Justify his 35-year tenure. Yeah. Now, inflation, just uh, inflation expenses, and stuff things like that. Of that yeah. sort. However, there was an ordinance that if he, he retire or whatever, 
it starts at another, it goes back to a different tier. I can't remember what that tier was, but it definitely wasn't 25,000. Tiffany went and changed the ordinance. And I know she says she did not. She tried to make it. She actually slipped up and said she did lower to 25. She did slip up and say that. He did seem like it was already there. And that was not the case. She changed it to be 25,000, not because of what was her excuse that the people felt that she was making too much. If that was the case, she would have just took 25,000 herself. The salary stays the same. If she win the seat, the salary only change if she, you know, the salary only changed if she loses. And she what loses, she yeah. To do was discourage people for running against for that seat. But she didn't say that. He didn't question that. So that's why I'm a little disappointed. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. he had that opportunity to ask those Bummer. questions and he did not. He just didn't know, girl. So that's where he, you know, he kind of dropped that ball there. Like, it was a lot of opportunities that he could have probed, and he didn't. Yeah, there's a lot. But like you said, I, I, I... But it's easy to judge it that way when you sit around looking at her all the time. He don't... He didn't even know who this bitch was. So, and for, uh, for those that have been following the story, bro, there's no way he could have learned all the shit she done in one day. There's no way. You know, I feel a little better talking to you about that in terms of, yeah, let everyone hear what she had to say mm -hmm. and what's not been said, mm -hmm. that you can kind of make your own conclusions throughout the amount of evidence and people here yeah. talking about this, that there's not, is not, we're not in a bizarre world. Yeah, he slipped up. He, like I said, I think he probably may go a little more aggressive talking about the situation after he realizes all the mistakes that have been done. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think, yeah, I think that point of just put, put it out there. Put what she say out there because a lot of people are are watching. It was about mm -hmm. two thousand people checking out, so there's enough people to see what she's saying is right or wrong. Do you have uh, we'll touch on the collective bargaining agreement regarding the mayor's security detail? So how said it's it's allows for reasonable security, but it does not support exactly. the excessive overtime costs that have been incurred, especially if there's a a budget issue, a significant budget strain. Like, mm -hmm. what were you thinking? Like, I, I guess I don't, I don't have the collective bar agreement. Well, here's the deal. Let weird. me break that down for you, bro. So sure. here's the deal. So think about it. In Illinois, we have, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to break it down in a way that, I'm going to break it down in a way that, you know, with a law that's in Illinois. So we okay. have, we're concealed in carry state, right? So, you know, we have the right with a license to carry a weapon. Now, when it comes to us using that weapon, we have to say we reasonably, we have to reasonably believe our life is in danger, right? Mm. So what does reasonably look like? Reasonably look like what? You are in my home. You are attacking me. I can reasonably protect myself. Right. The ordinance states that only officers are allowed to work a security detail for elected officials, right? So officers okay. are allowed to work a security detail for elected officials, right? So let's say this elected, she has the security detail walking her around, going to house to house. She has the security detail going to pick up her babies. She's a president. It doesn't say anything about a mayor being entitled to, because if that's the case, Jason can have security. Kiana can have security. Uh -oh. Tammy can have security. In fact, I'm petty enough. Um, if I were them, I'll go get it just to see. Um, how you hoes getting security, nigga? Y'all ain't got no money. It, did Nino approve of this? Did you wait? Did you ask Nino for extra security? Nino, this bitch out here asking for security. I mean, this is, it says elected officials, right? not the mayor. So that means if we're reasonably, you get what I'm saying? They right, all right, right. can yeah. have detail. So when she play on those words, that reasonably word, come on now, sis. So I don't think she even know what the law is, if I'm being honest with you. So that being... Does Tiffany Henyard know what the law is? One for yes, two for no. See it. Reasonable. She have a major event. Or, you know, something like that is happening in town, terrorist attack, whatever. 
right. reasonable. Not picking up your baby from school, going to do your laundry, going right into God. Tiffany, myself, and her detail one time went to a burger shop in Chicago for lunch. After that burger shop, it was around her daughter's birthday. So if anybody want to fact check this, we went to Chicago Ridge Mall on 95th to go shopping. Uh, what up, Jerry? Um, Tata. Oh, I, I believe that bitch know that she can go to jail for murdering a motherfucker. Do I think she know any of the ins and outs of laws that's regarding her job? I doubt it. For her daughter's birthday party stuff. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. What is reasonable about that? And I'll never forget that day because I felt like I was kidnapped because I'm out here running around with a kid for a kid I don't even know. Right. So the reasonable mean, security uh, is not for certainly for not for yeah. out of state. Certainly yeah. not for any of that. So what are we doing here, sis? He didn't question. And you know some of them niggas was at Rolling last night. You know one of them niggas probably fucked her on the White House lawn, nigga? No. Like he didn't have the information. Ooh, ooh. Fucked her on the White House lawn, nigga. Oh, yeah. Tiffany, this is bad, bro. These niggas is on your head, bro. And this bitch got some stories to tell. You I, you was dumb enough to fire a chief of staff and think that this bitch wasn't going to tell nothing. She wasn't going to tell nothing. She wasn't going to tell nothing. Paul's about to close for the next story. But, you know, we got to catch up with some of my favorite folks. We got to catch up to some of my favorite focus. WGN Investigates has an update on a questionable cancer charity now being investigated by the Illinois Attorney General. The South Suburban politician who the charity is named after is now denying direct involvement in the foundation that bears her name. All I can tell you that... Did not tell your stupid black ass not to go on that show, because if you went on this show, the news the next day was going to be on your mother. <laughs> Bitch, don't listen, bro. Fucking hard-headed, this one. I told this bitch this exact shit would happen. Oh. I, t I literally verbatim told this bitch last night that this exact thing was going to happen. And I told her when it was going to happen. I said it was going to happen today. I told your goofy ass, nigga. You don't listen to nobody. And these niggas are like, and this bitch done went and said that charity isn't hers even though it's bearing her name. Told I even said I said Dane Placo at the house laughing at this shit. Can't even believe this, man. Who told your stupid ass to go there? I'm not the one on anything. That's the only thing I can tell you right now. So I'm just trying to answer to the. So you're saying there's a, there's a foundation that's not registered, but it has nothing to do with you. Correct. That's true. Okay. That's so true. you're not aware of any of the work that they've done, money that they raised. Anything along those lines? Correct. Okay. No. Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard appeared on Roland Martin Unfiltered on YouTube last night. It comes after WGN Invest. Nigga, they watching her every move, nigga. She tried to hide on YouTube, nigga, and the bitch was on YouTube. She thought she was slick, and all we could tell that bitch is... Not slick. Investigates reported the Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation claims to support cancer patients but hasn't filed required financial disclosures to say how it raises or spends money. Henyard's claim that she's not involved in the foundation is contradicted by statements in public meetings and social media videos she's posted. As we've reported, her top advisor was also listed as the charity's registered agent. The nigga laughed. <laughs> 
<laughs> the nigga laughed. Did you hear that nigga chuckle? He can't even get it out, man. They can't. I told you they was gonna be laughing, bro. Hashtag Shay was right again, nigga. Episode one hundred, bro. I I predicted. Oh, this nigga's literally chuckling. He can't even get this shit out. They can't believe this bitch went on that show. It was like she ain't got nothing to do with this charity, nigga. Contradicted by statements in public meetings and social media videos she's posted. As we've reported, her top advisor was also listed as the charity's registered agent. <laughs> Top advisor is also listed as the registered agent. Her top advisor. And did you pay attention to the screen? They spot shadowed this nigga right here. The nigga sitting directly next to her is the nigga running the charity. And she's like, I ain't got nothing to do with that charity. Man, I told your stupid ass. And Roland Martin looked like a fucking idiot now. He looks, bro. And Roland Martin gonna be mad at his people. And I can't blame him. He's like, nigga, y'all sent me out here butt naked like this? This bitch was up here smelling like the inside of a rainbow. And then y'all y'all ain't even telling me this bitch was dirty too. I'm sitting here being nice to this bitch with them cheap ass shoes she had on. Tracy was good. The attorney general has ordered the foundation to stop soliciting money and is threatening legal action. The news is just, they can't, they can't even believe you, bitch. The news is outright flabbergasted. The nigga literally laughed like, can you believe this bitch did this? This is like, yeah, nigga. Um, I ain't got nothing to do with that shit. What you mean you ain't got nothing to do with it? You ain't got nothing to do with what? The charity. It's in Keith's name. Man, and that's the thing. She lucky Roland didn't know that. That would have ended her career. If he would have clapped back. But ain't it in Keith's name? Let's see what the polls say. Nigga said we fucking with Corey. This nigga Corey. This nigga Corey Holcomb continues to take massive L's in 2024. Corey, Corey Holcomb's career is pretty much over at this point. He's pretty much only going to be able to just... Have the 5150 people fuck with him. That's going to be it. But Tiffany, I'm going to park you here. Corey, come on and get it. Exactly where I want to get to. All right, we're gonna start about we're gonna start about right here. It may not even make sense, but it will start to make sense in a moment. Corey, you've been wearing some zesty ass shit lately too. I ain't gonna I'm not even gonna lie. Your outfits, your outfits have been getting a little zesty, my nigga. I'm not going to front. I told you what's up. And I'm telling you, man, I ain't got to lie about this shit, man. I wish I would lie about this shit. 
what they say, same be as every show. Every black man is gay, but let me, let me. Do not be deceived. All the bootleggers in the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a waste of time. You're being generous. Hmm. But to all y'all who try to dog out Corey Hoker, man, y'all motherfuckers got to understand, man. What is this shit? Scripture. Uh oh. Corinthians 15, 13. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Let me stop you right there, nigga. Let me stop you right there, nigga. This is when you run afoul of me. When you be, I don't deal with niggas picking and choosing the scripture. Even either you live with the Bible or you don't, nigga. There is no in between. Now you can know of the Bible, but you know you be picking and choosing. You a grown man that jokes about abortions. So for all you people out there who grab shit that other people say about me and run with it, you can't stand on nothing with that. I told you what's up. And I'm telling you, man, I ain't got to lie about this shit, man. I wish I would lie about this shit. What they say, same be as every show. Every black man is gay, but let me let me go, go back mm -hmm. down because we make the gays mad. They gave ten dollars. Every, every oh, wait, man wait. is gay, but but cause your talented is limited and you can't make money with them. Rick, that's how it comes across, Corey. <laughs> In the beginning, it was coming across like you was the one bold enough to speak out on certain dudes that clearly it seems like they be doing some fruity shit and whatnot. Then it went from that to anybody you feel like is making more money than you is gay. Every nigga. He took, wait, bro, you ain't even gonna believe this. Ricky still throwing you licks. That's some stupid shit. But thanks for the $10. I mean, like, <laughs> thanks you, for you, $10. well, we probably wouldn't read it if he ain't put $10. In it. Yeah. This is why you be losing. Y'all customer service is even bad. But he's still at a Just to be and D's like <laughs> D. D, you 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 are a big part of the problem, D. Able to speak to a nigga, you gave me ten dollars. That's gay. Oh you know <laughs> That's gay. Whether you know it or not. It was honest. This nigga super chatting your channel. Ten dollars is gay. Corey, you're jumping the shark with this everything's gay shit, nigga. You're coming across as gay. How the fuck do you get to think everything is gay, but your outfit ain't gay and Kevin Hart ain't gay or ever done no gay shit? Corey, your whole lure about you is unraveling and you won't stop. This is why even niggas like Marcus is like, don't really fuck with you like that no more. Mine's so tough. What the hell say? As a black blogger, she makes us look so bad. I support you, Corey. Tasha K is not how we all think. I know that ain't how y'all think, sir. So and I'm gonna play with Tasha K play too at some point. I may play it. The Tasha K portion ain't as important as what's about to happen. I right, appreciate Kamisha. you saying that. Fuck it, let me address the Tasha K shit. I'll get off that DJ academic shit. But anyway, I just want to mm. say the academic is, bro, I don't know you. One day I saw Joe Buttons punk you in a way where it looked weird. No disrespect to Joe Buttons now. But I could tell the way Joe Buttons kind of punked him. I was like, oh, that looked weird. But I think that's because academics is a fucking weirdo. Now, checking academics, I'm always with that. Figured that out. I figured that out. Hey, academics, I really don't want no problems with you and your Bagdoria crew. I know you can have a whole Bagdoria mob after me. I don't want it, man. Please just stop trying to... Corey, he was literally under attack from the gay mob. He was literally on his stream crying, Corey, because Saucy Santana went at him in a way where he didn't know how to respond because he didn't want to get canceled. So you don't even be knowing what you be talking about, bro. You just be running your mouth. Again, it goes back to 
anybody you got a problem with, you call them gay. Out a shadow of a doubt. How come, Corey, have you ever asked yourself, why, why do you always get in beef with gay people? To steal my show, he tried to create an account on um Rumble or something like that. Bruh, do right. That's what I'm saying to mm. you. You starting to play out anyway. You starting to go down. I heard you hit some big licks in this motherfucking entertainment world. Congratulations, but bro, just try to be straight up. Leave me alone. I don't know you. I don't really want no problems with you. I believe you backdoria mob. And I don't want the backdoria mob after me. Why are you afraid of the gay people coming after you? I don't give a fuck if they come after me. I ain't gonna do them bitches straight to their face. You can't cancel me, bitch. I don't want your money. But you want their money. That's why you don't want them after you. I'd rather get shot than pushed in. So, cool out. All right, to the obvious shit. Tasha K. Oh my God. See, I did the research, a little research on what happened when um, uh, the sister, the rapper, sued you and won $4 million. Cardi B. You've been nigga. able to maneuver in a way where you can still find a way to survive and keep kicking up dust. In America. But and Tasha K. This is Corey bootleg shit out of sync. Listen to me. Listen to me. Because I ain't talking shit. I'm, I'm speaking the truth. The same way I got in touch with you and called you yesterday. You can't hide from me. Are you threatening Tasha K out loud? Hey, what are you crashing out, nigga? You can't hide from me. You easy to find, bitch. Just like I'm easy to find. We out here, you you trying to hide because when, when, when it was time to pay up to Cardi B, you find a way like the motherfucking bootleg bitch to hide accounts and everything, whatever, whatever. So you able to still live in America because you hide. You hide because your hands dirty. You done done dirt. All that shit you said about Cardi B, then you turn around and lie and act like you got in touch with my daughter and her mama. And don't you realize you taking it too far, lying about that shit? You ain't got in touch with my daughter. You don't pay no money. You don't pay no money. It was just a heated moment in our house where we was motherfucking, where, where things, where, where in my sister house where things went like they went. You ain't got no money. Ain't nobody got no loyalty to come on your show. If I believe if my daughter came on your show, she'd know where you at. Because we know how to find people. You see, I called you. I called you, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Bitch was shocked. Then the bitch went on air and said I threatened her. Oh, wow. Oh, nigga? Oh, nigga? You, when you say shit like, you can't say that shit about a woman, Corey. Yeah, like, I, I know what you're trying to say, but you can't say that shit because that shit comes off as a threat, man, and the court will believe it. You can't just call a bitch. You got this bitch number from who knows where, and you called this bitch in a way and then let her know that she couldn't hide from you. Why would you say that? This nigga Corey be doing some dumb ass shit, bro. Oh. Then the bitch played what I said because, you know, in this new world, listen to this. In this new world, when you call people, especially people who got dirt on they ass, they recording you. Tasha K, I knew you was recording me, bitch. That's why I didn't, I wouldn't dare threaten a bitch. That's the old shit. Niggas don't threaten bitches no more. Huh. Niggas no. No, but you're not understanding what's considered a threat anymore. See, you thought that you had to say, I was going to beat your ass what it is if i call you on an emotional tirade with a threat i could get in trouble for that i didn't threaten you i told you what you did was wrong you lied about getting in touch with my motherfucking family and all that shit mm. hell no godfrey calling me
Uh oh. Know who Godfrey is? Press one for yes, two for no. Do you know the comedian Godfrey? Shit's about to make a left. When I tell you this shit's about to make a left turn. Why is Godfrey calling Corey Holcomb? The middle of his show. Fun fact. Godfrey was also on air at the same time doing his own podcast. Earlier in the show, Corey made a bunch of fucked up statements about Godfrey being from the Bagdoria side. Some people hopped in Godfrey's chat, told him that Corey was saying that shit. And this nigga called Corey live on air because you know that nigga ain't hard to find. The same nigga that told him to wear that zesty ass sweater and vest. Hey. <laughs> Yay. Let's see what the nigga wore. I'll be back, bitch. Oh. Yeah, what's up, man? Oh, yeah. Hi, Godfrey. Yeah, Darlene said hi. What's up? Yo, man, you, yo, I'm doing, you're doing your podcast, right? I'm doing mine in New York, and they're like, yo, Corey said something. He said something that he, that you did. I said, "What the fuck you talk about?" And I and, and I heard you said that I said that you started. In fact, I was the one that said, "I bet you Corey didn't start it because they only cut to that part where they're arguing." I said something must have happened before that. Godfrey. Before that. Godfrey. You know what I'm saying? You What's called up? me, right? Yeah, I called you. Had you already you said, recorded? Had you already recorded your show? Oh, right now? No, no, no we, we tried it before. All we, all we saw was the first part. We saw the first part where they went TMZ. TMZ, did, we showed the... That nigga said he got an anal bead necklace. <laughs> that is not an anal bead necklace, nigga. Those are billionaire kidney stones. The TMZ part. They made it look like you. But all I and I said I ended up. Wait, hold up. I ended up being right. Remember, you said Godfrey, you were right. I said I bet you any money, Corey. Someone got Corey to do that. I said that doesn't look right. That it looks like they're making Corey look like he started it. Godfrey Danchima. Godfrey Danchima. Yes, yes. I've known you over thirty years. You damn right you have. You know Let me you ask you a question one more time. Okay. When you called me, had you already taped that show? He said no. When I called you, I, when did I call you? A couple days ago, right? Yeah, we had I did it last Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. And I said, wait. Darnell is funny to me. Wait. Darnell is funny to me. To me. That's okay. I, I ain't got nothing against y'all thinking he funny. But Godfrey, to answer my question. I want to make sure it's clear. When you called me and talked to me, had you already recorded that show? Yeah, I, I did. Because how many days ago? I called you, what, four or five days ago? Because we tape on Tuesday. Did I call you after Tuesday? Yeah, you called me Wednesday morning or Tuesday night. Wednesday morning, right. And I said... I ended up being right because Dante said, yo, Godfrey, you was right. I said, I told you. Corey didn't just start that shit. I said, and I said it was some bitch ass shit that Donnell is fucking interrupting you on stage. Okay, said, Godfrey. Godfrey. Well, let me ask you a question. Why did you guys have, who is that dude, the, the white dude? 
Time out. Let's stop right here. Corey. He want to talk to you about the Donnell situation. Why are you getting ready to turn to question him about some white dude? We all know where, where is this going? With, come on, chat. Where is this going with the fucking white dude? I wonder what road this is going to go down with Godfrey and this white dude. I wonder where it's going to go. The white dude who was who was reading from 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 off camera. Oh, we got our producer Mike. He just reads. Is yeah. that your roommate? What? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, Godfrey. I'm asking you a question. Yes, sir. Do you live with a Caucasian male that's gay? No. Oh, did you, hold on. Did you used to? Never. Why? What? Godfrey, it's Corey. I've never, never missed. Why, why would I live with a Caucasian man that's gay? That's what you told me. Corey, what the fuck does this have to do with anything? Let's say the nigga told you that shit. Why are you bringing this up? in the middle of what he's actually trying to call you and talk to you about. Is it because he was about to be right? <clears throat> you didn't want to talk about how you got punked by Donnell. So you now you're trying to call Godfrey gay. You said your roommate was gay. Oh. Are you out your goddamn mind, Corey? Oh, my. Corey, he just told you to your face you a lie. My so God. I've never done that. I live with a woman, a black woman. I live with a woman, a black woman. Which everybody knows. What are you talking about? Godfrey. I so I'm crazy. You ain't never told me you had a roommate and one day he had some girls over and y'all was fucking. No, no, oh. So how is he gay? You told me you had a roommate and he had some girls over. So he's not gay? This nigga Corey, bro. No, no, no. Listen. What happened with the girls when the girls were over with the with the with the gay guy? Corey, you tell Corey a story, then he run with it until bro, Corey, wow. Modi, my friend who's gay yeah, yeah. because he was fucking with women at the time. We had these two girls that wanted to go, you know, they wanted to fuck. So I was like, yo, Modi, check it out. Let's go to my to my house and we can smash these chicks because I live in a brownstone. You can be in the living room with her and I'm going to go to the bedroom. And so when they started arguing, the girl wouldn't give up, give up the, you know, the shit. He started arguing. I came out the bedroom. I go, what y'all arguing about? Then he goes, he goes, that's why I stuck dick. I don't know how you deal with <laughs> these women. But wait, Godfrey, let me get this right. Okay, let's just say I got the story wrong. But I, you did. I do want to get this right, Godfrey. Yeah. You went with a gay man who felt like fucking some bitches that day. That is not what he said, nigga. That is not what he said, Corey. Stop, bro, you worst, bro. You gotta stop dealing with all these ratchet bitches you deal with, cause you act just like them. To your place and y'all fuck some hoes. I just wanna get it right. No, hold on. He came out after the fact because you know his being Jewish, he had to hide it. He came out after. That's why I told you my friend gay. He's gay because he's come out years later. Hold on, wait, wait, Godfrey, but you said after he got into it with the bitch, he said, that's why I suck dick. So is that when you found out he was gay at that moment? No, I started laughing because it was like, what the fuck? So he told me on the spot, that's why I suck dick. And I laughed because I was like, yo, what the fuck, Modi? Because we, I, I didn't have a fucking gay roommate. What's wrong with you? 
Godfrey. That's what, that's what, okay, let's just say I missed that. So this nigga told a story about a time that he found out one of his homies was gay. And the way he found out one of his homies was gay was he got, an, him and his homies was at the club, picked up some girls, took them back to the crib. <clears throat> he in the room with one girl, the other dude in the living room with the girl. They get into it, and then that nigga said, this, this is why I suck dick. I don't know how y'all deal with these girls. And that's how he, and he didn't even think it was real then. He thought it was just something he was saying. It's like, he thought, you know, them niggas probably drunk and everything. Because how would you, you know, I just found this out about my friend right now. And Corey has taken that. He told Corey this story because <clears throat> it's, you know, they're comedians. And, you know, there was some humor to it. He tells Corey this story. And Corey has now flipped it into this nigga had a gay roommate. Corey, this calls into question pretty much everything you've said about anybody now. Because how the fuck you make that big of a jump from this nigga told you a story about when he found out one of his niggas was gay and bitches were involved <laughs> and you flipped this into he had a gay roommate. Like, nigga, this is wild. Understood it. Let's just say that. Let's say I misunderstood it. But hold on, Godfrey. I'm trying to make sure it's clear. I'm trying to make sure it's clear. So you went to your house with a dude to fuck some bitches, and you found out he was gay later on. Fine. That's right. And this is like Even though he said, after he got into it with the bitches, he said, that's why I suck dick. Bro, he was probably white. And Corey, I know you don't have any white friends. Bro, the most heterosexual white boys make some of the most off-the-wall gay jokes. That's kind of like a white boy thing. But Corey knows all of this. Corey playing dumb. Again, I don't even know what this has to do with anything. Godfrey, so now Godfrey's gay. I'm, this is weird, bro. It's fucking weird. I exactly. What up, Diggity? What up, uh, Prissy? Fresh. Exactly. I don't understand what the fuck nigga. What his point is, and he think he winning right now. This nigga got this zesty ass outfit on with the with the motherfucking kidney stones of billionaires around his neck. This nigga want to try to act like Godfrey's the one looking zesty. So understand that if you ever had a friend that came out and turned out to be gay, by Corey's logic, you gay too. Because none of the people Corey called friends are gay, ever been gay, and none of them are gay now. I said, damn, you're gay? And he's like, yeah, but I, but I can't tell any of my sexual. I'm like, god damn, dude. And I laughed because it was some funny shit. Godfrey from Chicago, there is no bisexual, brother. There's only dick in the ass or no dick in the ass. This nigga's a moron. You're gaslighting the whole point. It doesn't matter if the nigga was bisexual, actually really gay. Are you are you trying to say that Godfrey did know it? Is that what you're trying to get at? Yes, but if I if I find out on the spot, is it my fault? Is it my fault? Godfrey. Is, it, is it my fault? So you let, yes, it's your fault. If you if you go on fifty one fifty and say Godfrey gay, you a fucking asshole. <laughs> God, you know, I, right. I'm talking to you while my show going on. Listen, first of all, I don't even, re I don't even read for gay role. I don't even read for. Your gay first role on Soul Plane, your name was Gay Man. Stop. I got you, Godfrey. This is an easy one. This is an easy one, Godfrey. His last name was Gayman, and the joke was they kept calling him Gay Man, even though his last name was not Gay Man, it was Gayman. 
See how Corey's trying to play and be like, he's trying to almost make it seem like Godfrey was in a dress in his first role. Anybody who's seen Soul Plane, you remember that the pilot name was Gayman, but Snoop would call that nigga Gay Man and shit like that. That was a joke. His name wasn't actually Gay Man, Corey. Stop. It was Gayman. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Oh, it was Gayman. My fault. Oh. But it was. Jeffrey, stop! <laughs> Corey, you, you, bro, you're you're disgusting, nigga. This is you feeling the pressure at almost sixty, nigga. This is what this is what looking looking back and seeing everybody else that came up through the ranks with you is better than you. You and D Ray. You and D-Ray was on fucking Jerry Springer together. Now that nigga, he, he, he still doing tours, being movies and all this shit. He gay? D-Ray Davis gay? He been in more than four movies. He been in some big shit too. You, you getting ready to call D-Ray gay? Play. What was my line? Diggity, me and you, bro. Me and you see eye to eye on this one. I be rocking with 5150, but the Cat Williams interview broke this nigga. 2024 broke him. He came in on the wrong accord, flipping out on his daughter like that, all this goofy shit, just keep taking L's. And this one's getting ready to get really bad. I didn't say what your line was. I just said, your first role, when you got so plain, you was gayman, the pilot, right? Right, gayman. And he was not gay. That actor, the, the pilot in that movie was not gay. It was kind of like, the, it was just a take on the old thing where it's like, you make fun of some dude that's got a girl first name. It was basically like that. Hey, dude, now I'm making dude a no, that's what I'm saying. I, Godfrey, these are just facts. Now, you cleared up the roommate shit. You cleared up the roommate shit. Now, now it wasn't the roommate. It's just y'all went over there, and after y'all... Corey, how did you confuse a nigga talking about one time he was with one of his niggas fucking some bitches, fucking some bitches with he lived with a gay roommate? How did you confuse that? You know you made that up. Fuck the bitches you found out he was gay. Now, now, Let me now, just now, get this clear with you, Godfrey. You would, please, I'm not trying to talk over you, but I have to make sure you hear this. Godfrey, you brought a white man to your house and said you didn't know he was gay. Corey, you're leaving out a very, 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 very big, big, big thing. He did not bring a white man back to his house. He brought two bitches. So apparently they wasn't getting ready to be a threesome. So he needed a wingman. And this nigga said he was down. That nigga could have told Godfrey, nigga, I'm gay. I don't like bitch. He could have told him that right then. But remember, he also said he was a little Jewish kid. Couldn't come out like that. Corey think he winning too. Ignorant ass nigga. This nigga's so stupid, he don't even know to hold the microphone up to the top of the phone where the actual noise is coming out of. He's holding the mic next to the mic. Step two. I didn't know he was gay, dude. This is 98, bro. This is my and this was 1998. Again, this nigga called Corey to talk about the Donnell Rollins shit. And Corey is bringing up some shit that happened one time in 1998. I was 16 years old, nigga, when this shit happened. What the fuck does that have to do with anything, Corey? Years later. So he didn't come out and say he was gay till like 2013? Because he would be kicked out of the Seneca. He was fucking six, bro. Thank you. Because he was a, he was a, he was a cancer in the Seneca. He couldn't Puffy! He got kicked out of the synagogue. That's how he knew it was real. Fuck chicks! <laughs> I can't believe 
Yeah, gay people were not out like that in 98. Corey act like this was, like this, no, they were not. The only ones that were out like that were the ultra flamboyant ones. What the, what the hell? Godfrey, Godfrey, okay. okay. Godfrey, I'm wrong. You didn't know he was gay, and you just went with him to smash some bitches. All right. All right. But Godfrey. So what was the play, Corey? They, he was, they was going to get to the house with the bitches and fuck each other in front of the bitches? They could have just went to the house without the bitches if that was the play. What the fuck is wrong with you? This nigga wanted to get on Club Shay Shay. All this nigga's doing is searching for a viral moment at this point. But I'm like, Corey, you keep getting a little low level of viral, but it, it's all makes you, every bit of it makes you look bad. You get in the comment sections of anywhere outside of 5150 and you getting dunked on. And not just by women, because that's what you'll say is just mainly women. No, it's a lot of dudes dunking on you too. And a lot of them are saying like, nigga, what has happened to you? And I'll tell you what's happening. He feel the pressure, bro. He feel like he should be on and he ain't. And everybody else, bro, that's a tough pill, bro. Every pretty much everybody else around him. Oh, this nigga try to tell Donnell Rollins that his money was mild. Nigga, you know Donnell got way more money than you. Why are you even playing like that? Godfrey, I want you to know, even if you are gay, I still like you. Oh my. Oh no, you did. Wait a minute. No, you did. He said he been friends with this nigga for 30 motherfucking years. And he said this to a 30 year old, a 30 year friend on the internet for some clout, nigga. Craig, Marcus, this who y'all look up to? This nigga? This nigga gonna put y'all on? He ain't even on. My God, he is. You are my friend, Godfrey. I just want you to know, I believe that things have happened in your life that you don't want to talk about. But when I, like I said, if you've been in over three or more movies, what I said was, you probably had a dick in your ass. Ha <laughs> 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 Almost forgot. You know, Rick is so wild and has went so far. Let's turn up then. The meter. It's shit that I can't even tell, talk, tell you on TV. I mean, you know, I, for the sake of our friendship, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm not even going to bring it up. But trust me, he's went there. He, he, he has went where it's like, yo, Rick, man, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? You done took this shit too far. And his response is like this. There's no such players. <laughs> Darkness. Where are we going? Let's go to the abyss, nigga. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm not with it, man. I don't want to go to the abyss, man. You know what I'm saying? Rick wants to go to the abyss. In fact? In fact, he dwells in the abyss. Rick James dwells in the abyss. Okay? And he and he wants company sometimes. You know, and, and for some reason, he likes to reach out for me. Whenever I'm around, when he, when he wants to go there, he would reach out for me to try to take take me to the abyss with him. And I'm not with it, man. I'm not with it. And that's when we end up, you know, tussling or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. You might be getting booty, dick in the ass too, bro. Right, right. It's natural for people to be like, you did it too. No. Swing and a miss. 
So you get to say he's done more than three movies, so he gay. When he point out that you've done more than three movies, you don't deny it. You don't deny that it's true. You just say that it's natural. This is why Corey has always said it. Remember, Corey told Corey been in Watermelon Man or whatever the fuck. Then he then he told you about how he dressed up as a Santa Claus, not as a celebrity, just as some nigga playing Santa Claus for rich white people. So, bro, Corey has been in multiple compromised positions. So yeah, Corey, you've been in four movies. Did you have the dick in your ass or not, nigga? Watermelon Heist. Thank you, Prissy. So, nigga, stop acting like you just so pure in this shit like that, bro. You won't say a bad thing about Tyler Perry or Kevin Hart. Who? Come on, nigga. <laughs> You've been on a series and you have more than three movies. Right, right. It's natural for people to be like, you did it too. But that's not what's happening here. <laughs> I got I probably did four movies. I don't chase I, I don't chase movies because it ain't no money in it for a nigga like me until Did you take dick in the ass after that third one? You he still ain't denying that he's taking the dick. For the record. Until, until the money get cracking, but I'm not, I'm not, I, that's why I said you probably had a dick in your ass, but I'm coming out with facts, Godfrey. He still ain't denied it. We coming out with facts. Your name was Gaiman in the first movie. Is that a lie? <laughs> My name's Gaiman, but was I gay? I was in a, I was in a fucking hot jacuzzi with some hoes. Not gay in that movie. He had hoes. See, Corey, how you gaslighting? This nigga's like his the last name of his character was Gaiman. And now Corey's trying to make it seem like he was playing a gay man in the movie. You gross, nigga. What are you talking about? <laughs> what makes you think I had a gay roommate? TD Jakes fuck hoes too! <laughs> It, bro, I couldn't even handle that. That made me hit the wrong button like a motherfucker, nigga. Like, <laughs> excuse me. I wasn't even ready for that. This nigga talking about TDJ fuck hoes. Try to pep him up, cause if he. Oh my god! Oh my god! I was mild. You. This is ninety-eight, bro. This motherfucker came out like 15 years later. So he didn't come out and say he was gay till like 2013? Because he was kicked out of the Seneca. He was gay, and you just went with him to smash him. Oh talk about, but when I, like I said, if you've been in over th three movies, so you might be getting booty, dick in the ass too. Bro. Right. I'm so sorry for hitting that button. This nigga brought up fucking TD Jakes, nigga. Right, it's natural for people to be like, you did it too. Nope. But that's not what's right happening here. <laughs> I got I probably did four movies. I don't chase I, I don't chase movies. You see how he was about to say he probably had a dick in his ass and then said I probably did four movies, or was that just me? Not what's happening. Am I am I reaching here? <laughs> I got. I probably did four movies. I don't chase. I, I don't chase movies because it ain't no money in it for a nigga like me until until the money get cracking. But I'm not. I'm not. I, that's why I said you probably had a dick in your ass. But I'm coming out with facts, Godfrey. We coming out with facts. Your name was Gaiman in the first movie. Is that a lie? Making... <laughs> oh my, my name's Gaiman, but was I gay? I was in a, I was in a fucking hot jacuzzi with some hoes. Fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Is he lying, Corey? <laughs> what makes you think I had a gay roommate? TD Jakes fuck hoes too. <laughs> Let's stop right there. I would have been. Swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? Have you gone through a time of swallowing?
Didn't he just tell us that there ain't no such thing as bisexual? Didn't he just say that? He just said that. Now, all of a sudden, he's trying to point to T.D. Jakes being bisexual. That means that he is. This nigga talks out of both sides of his mouth, bro. Everything is some type of shock punchline. Everything he say, he trying to invoke shock. I stop, but I can't. I can't. You guys are so dumb. You guys are so stupid. What? I'm just here to tell you. Yo, Corey. I'm speaking facts. I thought about these facts. That's why I didn't. I didn't. No, I can't say you're gay, Godfrey. All I can say is the company you keep. Sometimes you be like, fuck it, let's sleep. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm just saying. Godfrey, I ain't mad at you. I'm just saying. Well, y'all didn't. I felt like you took Ashy Larry's side on the show. Oh, so that's what all of this is about. So that's what all this is about. So this nigga said he actually do think Donnell is funny. So since she thinks Donnell is funny, he's gay. He sound like such a fucking homo. Oh my goodness. You sensitive bitch. This nigga sitting here wearing pink talking about you took his side over mine. Yeah, face ass. Yes, y'all did. The, the one brother, what's his name, Dante? The brother Dante said my credibility is in question. That hurt me a lot. It is. You trying to say that Larry Donnell Rollins is broke. You try to say his comedy is mild. And that was after you went at his homie, Dave Chappelle. And what did you say along with Dave Chappelle? That all of the comedians around him that open up for him are fruit booties. That's what you said. That nigga caught your ass lacking, ran down on you, embarrassed you, and then Godfrey and them... They like, yeah, this nigga Corey, like, nigga, you always telling people that if a nigga ran down on you like that, it was going down. And a nigga ran down on you and you didn't do, you didn't even stand up. You try to tell Donnell Rollins that you was more famous than him. Way more white people know him than you. My uh, nigga. The white people around me only know about you because of me, nigga. <laughs> Bro, this is just... You done fell off, Corey. You sitting here whining and crying because this nigga... In one argument, this this why Corey don't have no friends. If you don't agree with him on everything, one thing you don't agree with him with, he cut you off. He told you he do kids like that. If a teenage kid do some teenage shit like talk back, instead of checking them, he putting them out. But I don't I don't take it personally. Where I hate, huh? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let let, let Dante speak. Go ahead. I didn't know the whole Corey. What's up, Dante? This is the first time we talk. <laughs> I, no, I'm going to hung out from back in the days with Patrice. But anyway, look. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Yeah, this is my first time ever talking to you. Nigga, we hung out before. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all stuff. Y'all black. Y'all are black. I didn't know the whole story, right? Right. Well, I didn't know the whole story, and I was, and you said that he wasn't funny. 
Who I no, I said on stage, Dante, where everybody heard it, he's mild. Did you see? You know what Corey get be getting at when he say motherfuckers are mild? All he's trying to say is, is I'm willing to make abortion jokes and he ain't. I'm willing to make jokes about girls being nasty and built like wisdom te teeth and all types of other shit. And since niggas don't say jokes that ratchet, raunchy, then that means they are mild by definition. No, nigga. Corey, you have no range. You have no real storytelling ability. The only stories you can tell is about one night stands with ugly bitches. Come on, Corey fans. Think about this nigga comedy and be honest. If, if, he, if he goes into telling a story, the story's going to be about some ratchet bitch he fucking with. One story he told was when he had to take this ratchet bitch to the abortion clinic. Another one was a one night stand over a, over some ugly bitch house where he he wiped his dick off on her son's coat. Like th these are the only stories Corey can tell. He don't have no real storytelling ability. Now some of the the, the jokes should be funny to me. Them should be hilarious. But it's like it's hilarious because it's like it's sad that the niggas be having to live lives like that. You are you bro, you married and you thinking about leaving your wife, go watch Corey. He'll let you know what, what it is to be out there at 50. He'll tell a story about how he got to pay for pussy. And, and but he'll tell it in a way that it's supposed to sound like some cool and boss shit, but it's like, nigga, you've been in the game 30 years and you got to pay for pussy? Well, first of all, how come you ain't just found the baddest bitch for you and settled down? Because you ain't shit. And he said, and that's another one. That's the another biggest highlight of all of this comedy is that he'll tell you he ain't shit. See his special? He never said he wasn't. Funny. So you saying that's beast mode? No, I thought the right. was good. I thought the special was good. I don't think his special was trash. I don't think it was trash. Well, then you lost. I think it was mild. You got to fuck with, you got to fuck with opioids to laugh hard at that shit. Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm just saying. Look. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, out of all the specials, all the specials on Netflix. And diggity, here's the crazy part about it. Here's why, for me personally, it could be, it could maybe come across as kind of cringe if I went to one of his shows. It's because, nigga, it's been like 20 years, and you're, these are still just the jokes you have. Like, think about this shit. All the great comics, when they get older, they have older stories, family oriented stories, and uh, shit like that. This nigga is still just out in the fucking streets. Just still like, he never evolved. He's never evolved from the nigga in the 20s. He's just still the nigga in the 20s, just knocking off hoes, paying for pussy here and there, fucking with bitches that ain't shit so they can have some confidence. He feel like a, he feel like a celebrity. Bro, he's even said it. He likes, bro, I've never heard of some nigga say, I like fucking with bitches that are down on their luck. That's, that's a level of narcissism, nigga, where it's like, you you got to get people down on their luck to make you feel better. So if you throw them a couple hundred dollars, they'll act like this is the greatest shit ever. You take a motherfucker to Six Flags and, and they acting like you took them to France. He was drunk in a motherfucker too. That had to be fun. No, his special was funny. I did not say his special was not funny. I did not say he wasn't funny that night at the Lab Factory. But Dante, he's a mild comedian. He's not beast mode. I can't, I can't say that, man. I'm Neither are you. What? 
Bro, Corey, like, I can't stand niggas that, uh, like, Corey's that nigga that sit around and watch NBA basketball swearing that he's better than all of them niggas that play. He he a nigga that maybe he could hoop a little bit. He could hoop a little bit, was killing some niggas at some parks and shit like that. And in his mind, he just didn't play NBA ball because he didn't want to. But understand that if he was willing to get fucked in the ass, he could fill out all these arenas too. That's because in Corey's mind, he's like, what is it? It can't be the fact that he's terrible at networking and having business relationships and shit because he flies off the handle. Nope, can't be that. It has to be because I'm not gay, allegedly. When, when, them dudes, when, them dudes had, when those dudes had, uh, when fucking they, when those dudes was trying to extort Mike Epps. But that was all a long time ago. Yeah, like that 1998 story you brought up. Yeah, that was a long time ago, right. You know how bitches who looked at that club back then look now? <laughs> you, know, you know what else? You know what else? Let me tell y'all something about Donnell. Nobody on the internet said that he wasn't ugly. That's one thing that wasn't said. Poor guy. Again, back to this nigga spent an hour and a half talking about another man's appearance. That's not gay at all. And now he's back to doing it again. Poor guy. Everybody agreed he was ugly. Did you just say poor guy? Darlene, if this nigga wanted to throw you 5,000 to fuck, you do it. Put it on something you wouldn't. Put it on something you wouldn't let Donnell Rollins fuck for $5,000. You talking about letting Shannon Sharp fuck, and he's zesty than a motherfucker. And you said Shannon Sharp ain't even got to take you on a date. That's what you said. Oh, man. But did anybody agree? A lot of people look at it. Look at the. Don't go off me. Go off the comments. Go off the comments. I gotta finish the show, and I'm glad y'all called. Oh, no, but I, I, I just want y'all to know, man. I didn't, I didn't say nothing behind y'all back in a way where it's hate. It's just when I saw y'all, I felt like y'all was on Donnell's side, and it hurt. So then I decided to call y'all gay because I'm a weak ass beta, nigga. Beta, oh, you niggas, it's, uh, it felt like you were taking Donnell's side. So I'm going to go on my show, and I'm going to call you gay. What a fucking pussy this nigga is. This nigga Corey, weak as shit. Because Godfrey had just called me, and I told Godfrey I ain't said nothing about fellatio. <laughs> Damn, Prissy. Hey, Corey, Prissy got a great question for you, nigga. If you think Donnell is ugly, who do you think is cute? <laughs> that, that one hurts, Corey. That's a, I need an answer to that question. That's your opinion. It's all good. What does it mean? He said, what does it mean? No, he was, he was buying cocaine at them clubs, so that's why y'all kind of feel sorry for him and try to pep him up. Cause if he was getting high in the '90s and he's still alive, that's fucking amazing. Okay, Dante, that's y'all opinion. I ain't got nothing against y'all opinion. But it seemed like everybody was mad at me because I said he was mild. Look, check it out. On, on the comedy side, we got comedians that go level one, two, three, four, five. He's a level three. That's a serviceable comedian. Then how is he making more money than you? Oh, he, he gay. My bad. He's okay if you can't get the guy you want to get. To you. 
Well, I'm telling you, I have nothing against that, Dante and Godfrey. If y'all think, because y'all said he was a beast, and that's fucking ridiculous. Yo, I've watched this nigga murder all the time. I ain't gonna Just because a nigga could do a whole four rolls of coke, that don't make him a beast. <laughs> now this nigga's a cokehead. Now this nigga's a cokehead. Got you, boy. Oh my God. That just mean that nigga nose is amazing. <laughs> All personal insults. Nigga, she had an iced tea shirt on last week. What up? You from Chicago, you know what mild is. We eat mild sauce when we don't want hot sauce. We ain't ready for the heat. He's mild. You don't need water to lick your fingers with him. Let me, let me, let me, let me see. First of all, listen, Donald, uh, Donnell Rollins has done, like, when I would come around Chappelle, uh, Donald would act real like a bitch with me. Like, he'd be on uh, real funny acting with me. So all this shit with the Chappelle shit and all that, I, I agree with you on all of that other shit. Like, Sorry, but I said, Donnell's funny to me. Mm -hmm. Look, I and I didn't, I didn't speak on Chappelle. My bad, go ahead. I didn't shit on Chappelle. What I did say no, 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 is he be bombing. And I and you said that all the people around him are gay. I got facts behind that. I didn't say he he, he wasn't a great actor. But you did call him, him all the people around him, gay. I agree with 95% of the shit you say. Do you know that? I'm like, yup, yup. But I said you be with niggas. Oh. I said you be with niggas. <laughs> Fuck you, Godfrey. I got to finish my show. Hey, man, thanks, y'all, for calling me, because it ain't no hate. It ain't hate. It's just... Godfrey's a class act. Yeah, Godfrey, that's why if you, you call ever you. come out the bag, will you... That's why you called this nigga gay. Because it ain't no hate. This nigga's a weirdo. You do it on my show. Oh, shit. Please, I'm trying to be like Club Shay Shay. I'm going to wear a tight jogging suit and ask you two and a half hours worth of questions. He ain't playing either. <laughs> I got more than three movies. All right. Go ahead on, Godfrey. I'm going to holler at you, man. He still ain't denied it. Look, we love you, Godfrey. Oh. Man, look, I I don't want no motherfuckers. Right there, I don't want no motherfuckers act like I'm like fuck that nigga. He ain't shit. I don't feel oh, that way. True, but I'm telling you, Godfrey oh. has done things with moisture to it. This why this nigga has no fucking friends, bro. <laughs> but that's my man. I ain't mad at him. All the people who prefer to get smashed, I ain't got nothing against you. God damn it. Who a famous um, Bagdorian? I'm putting you on the spot, D. Who you know that's a Bagdorian that's famous? Uh, it ain't that hard. We live in Hollywood. No, that you would know, too. A Greg Reporter. Who is that? Is his name Greg Reporter? Yeah, I don't right. know who that is, D. Oh, you don't know? Wait. No, 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 no. Oh, my God. No, not Greg Reporter, the musician. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Billy Porter. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, Greg yeah. Well, that's the obvious Greg dude. Greg Reporter's the jazz But I'm talking about the guys who walk around here and act like they just regular dudes. We see it all the time. Oh, but... yeah, but I mean, you can... Like Corey? I can't. I, I... We ain't mad at him, man. I can't speculate. We ain't mad that's at him, man. Right. Anyway, I got on. I got. I got on academics. I left that alone. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. It's too many haters coming at me now. It's too many of y'all, man. It's like y'all coming from the top, low, both sides. Corey, them niggas wasn't hating on you. All they said was they didn't agree with your assessment of Donnell Rollins, and then you jumped off the bridge by going, "These niggas are gay." See, there they go. The back door is. They all hang out together and always defending each other. You sound like you gay, nigga. I ain't gonna front. It's excessive, bro. I don't have no problem calling gay people out. I do the shit. This shit is excessive. It's the same shit I said with Chappelle. I'm like, bro, I have no problem with you calling out the transgender people, but it's excessive to the point where I'm like, nigga, how many of them niggas have you fucked? It's excessive.
Because that's how Corey try to make it. He'd be like, man, why y'all trying to act like I can't say nothing about gay people? Ain't nobody say that. It's just that, nigga, you somehow, everybody you disagree with is gay. And everybody that's doing, being successful is gay. Except Kevin Hart, who you can't see how anybody could think Kevin Hart is gay. Even though you said niggas that put on the dress are gay. Kevin Hart put on the dress. They got bro. Blatant hypocrisy. He act like the ratchet girls he date. Gaslighting. Want you to think they the smartest motherfucker ever, but then when it's time for their smarts to kick in, they play dumb than a motherfucker. Like, I thought you were super smart. Why are you playing so dumb right now? Or you not playing, so you not smart. I don't fuck with that big titty motherfucker. Tasha K don't like niggas like me. She she she's a, she she more into the beta type. Now, obviously, I keep my ear to all streets, but why the fuck would I ever give Tasha K money? It's like giving it to Cardi B. Why the fuck would I ever give Cardi B money? Austin, peace out. I guess we got to touch this Meek story right quick before I get the fuck up out of here. This nigga Corey, bro, you done fell off. You've had a bad 2024, bro. You getting up here reading scripture and shit like you a man of God, nigga. Stop, bro. Ain't no one foot in, one foot out, nigga. That is correct. Meek Mill is from Philadelphia. The other night we were reading... A lawsuit from Rodney Jones, who made some very, 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 very bold statements about Meek Mill. And several others. How did we know it was Meek Mill? The person said the rapper was a person that is from Philadelphia that dated rapper Nicki Minaj. Who else could that possibly be other than Robert Mahimik? Or no, it's Rahimik Mike. Uh, what's his last name? Whatever the fuck. Robert, if it ain't you, then who is it? Shout out to your cousin. Still can't do it. Shay don't choose size. Shay calls balls and strikes. Meek, you got some explaining to do. Let's, let me go ahead and get it started right. Practical nuke incoming! I would trash any celebrity if they tried wild move on me. No pics literally go crazy on them. That is all. I'm from Philly, nigga. All my niggas always watch me around this wild ass industry. Uh, That's a pretty mild sauce reaction. What 
when you when you at Michael Rubin's white party, wasn't it you? That was you, wasn't it? That could, you know me, me. I could be wrong. What are you doing with Ruben, bro? Before you get on your little tirade, Meek, I want to remind you <laughs> that I got a pretty good memory, cuz all the way back when you had them zesty braids. Uh oh. Y'all gonna say his braids wasn't zesty? If you remember Meek Mill braids, think about it. Them shits wasn't zesty. Not even a little bit. You got it. I was just asking. You know the type of evil shit Jay-Z done did. Him and his wife in that cauldron they got in their basement. Okay, Meek, keep this energy. Trigger finger or Twitter fingers activate. Next, I'm a next I'm gonna expose who's behind trying to kill the black image of the most influential artists. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. First of all, what is he talking about? Niggas just want to know if you was getting fucked. All this other shit feel extra to us. Nigga, was you getting that pipe? Feels like you kind of dancing. Because here's something that they've said that, uh, that I've heard. That these niggas, they can allude to not getting fucked, but they can never say it or they'll lose everything. So that's why I found it very important that not even Corey would deny that he, after doing four movies, would have been fucked. He's basically telling y'all, how do y'all think I know? Man, I can't wait to be done with that. Episode 100, nigga. Hold on. Let me light my blunt. How many blunts did I smoke in 100 episodes? Nigga, I couldn't tell you if I tried. I literally have to go back and watch. I'm blessed. Okay, me. Eliminate anything toxic to the black male culture immediately. Nigga, you are not the black male culture or black culture 
for that, man. I'm sorry, black women. I did not see that it just said black culture. I want y'all to think it was like, damn, Shane don't even fuck with us. Shut up, bitch. Damn. Why is the fact that you be a bitch in a lawsuit about doing some gay shit with Diddy and the rest of them niggas? What does this have to do with black culture? Culture is not involved in this. Whatever culture we share as black people is not tied up in him fucking Diddy. Nigga, you know you like to ride bikes. Not done. This is the one where I said, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. The one I'm about to put on the screen, this is the one where I said, damn, so Meek is gay. Practical nuke incoming! And before I put it on the screen, The last time you heard a Meek Mill song that was a banger. When I got a girl around me, I'm fucking her twice a day. Ask some of your favorites. Pussy don't control me, but it's like a high. One love to the gay people, but that juicy pussy do it for me. I done ran red lights to get that feeling. Y'all weird on here like devils. Oh, nigga, you gay. <laughs> I am not gay. I have relationships with women and sex with men. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. When niggas is talking like this, they gay. This is a nigga trying to pretend he's not gay. Pussy don't control you, but you running red lights for pussy? Pussy control. I'm not gay no more. I am delivered. Will you please deny that you did it so I can stop? I'll at least give you that. Thank you, Fresh. I'll at least give you that much if you'll just deny it. If you just come out and say, I ain't never fucked no other man. Corey wouldn't even say it. I mean, this nigga Meek out here just fucking. And it's all because of academics going at him, but again, what did he expect? What did he expect? Them niggas have been beefing at each other's throats for years, and then this nigga gonna play dumb. Fuck the dumb shit. Explain these pictures then, bro. He caught in a motherfucker, nigga. This nigga's all sweaty and shit. Of course, Michael Rubin kept him from going for going to prison, and that shit was not free. Meek don't be doing no gay shit.
Yeah, let me find that. Found it. You don't you don't be doing no zesty shit for these billionaires, Meek? You don't be doing nothing? Oh, it's in! Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing bunny hops, Meek? Because you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat. Keep going. Count out loud. Count out loud. Huh? I would have been swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? Have you gone through a time of swallowing? Six, seven, eight, nine, 40, 41, 42. Keep up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't cheat on your buddy hops. They suck. Your buddy hops suck. You got 250 more to go. These rich white men got this nigga doing bunny hops on camera, nigga. This nigga's supposed to be the most gangster rapper. From Philly, I slide on niggas, all this shit. But then white man had this nigga doing bunny hops on the tennis court, nigga. This this is y'all thug ass nigga, bro. Oh, oh, oh it's in. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Why are you doing bunny hops, Meek? Because you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat. Keep going. Count out loud. Count out loud. Can't, huh? Shit they made him do on public camera. What what have you done on private camera, Meek? Six, seven, eight, nine, 40, 41, 42. Keep up. Keep, six, keep going. Seven, and they know that this is embarrassing this nigga. This nigga's supposed to be the hardest fucking rapper nigga from Philly. Nine, <laughs> one, two. Keep going. Three, keep five, going. Eight, Don't Drake, I'm mad you ain't released a diss song when this came out. I'd have started the beef all over. But she got your buddy hops. They suck. Your buddy hops suck. You got 250 more to go. Listen to how that nigga's talking to Meek Mill. Hey, nigga, I oh, but you ain't about to be talking to me like that, nigga. Shut the fuck up, nigga. Want the album budget or not? You're sucking my cock later anyway. You sucking that nigga's dick? Man, I am not gay. I have relationships with women and sex with men. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. So that's why this nigga coming out talking like he talking in these tweets. I'm like, nigga, this is what's called hit dog will holla syndrome, nigga. This is hit dog will holla syndrome. In the flesh. Cause nigga. Nigga, everybody know. And nigga, you still talking? And I almost was going to give you points for denying that you were gay. But you didn't. You worded that shit smooth. The powers of be probably told you don't do that shit again. I mean, this nigga Meek is over here getting destroyed, nigga. Yeah, y'all see these rappers with these gay styles. They want that look. Leave that to them. I come from the gangster shit surviving in the jungle. Cut to me at the tennis court. I can just leave it right there, Meek. Does this look like you come from that gangster shit surviving in the jungle? 
Nigga, you out here bunny hopping for rich white men, nigga. What are you talking about? Meek, you have the right to remain silent. <laughs> this is what everybody told him last time. I can't believe this nigga still, it ain't even no more, and he's still doing the same stupid shit. But here's where things get tri tricky, Meek. Because again, I need y'all niggas to, y'all niggas are allowed to dance around it, but you niggas are not allowed to say you not gay or don't do gay shit. I have the right to say I ain't gay and I'll trash anybody that play with my manhood. Are you exercising that right? You're right. You do have the right to say you ain't gay. Are you exercising that right right now? I, that matters. I mean, for me anyway. These billionaire white men know the truth. They know what your booty hole look like, allegedly. In the words of the soldier of the gang spitter, everything I'm saying is alleged. <laughs> Meek, they Meek, they ain't never touched on you, not once. Cause why do they hang around this? Why does this nigga get to hang around them? It ain't like he's still making music. But it's almost like he's, they turned him, he went from rapper to Fonsworth Bentley. I like the way you move. I like the way you move. I like the way you move. I like the way. I like the way. This nigga is, they turned this nigga, this is their personal the personal uh slave, nigga. You know this meek personal slave. Meek say what's up to everybody. So what was Meek gonna get if he won? And Meek, are you gonna catch the fade with any nigga from your hood to say you look like a sellout? He just set a back rub. And he was going to have to give it. If he won, he was going to have to give that nigga a back rub. Great job, Meek. Get over here and rub my back. I'm tense. So tell me the truth, Ruben. How on earth did you get Meek Mill to let you fuck? Just ask him how I did it. I got out the limo, grabbed the hand, went upstairs and fucked her. Notice Usher didn't come out and say nothing. He's still on his honeymoon. The, this shit's getting out of hand, bro. But have you been following hip hop and shit for a while? Over the last 10 years, you pretty much learned that 70% of the niggas you fuck with was doing some nefarious shit. And a lot of people, you found out a lot of people that uh that just like disappeared, you found out that they didn't just they didn't just like fall off them niggas left. A lot of niggas just left. They saw what the fuck they had to give up. Everybody didn't sell they saw.
nigga, drink uh that that last album he did, that shit was trash. Meek ain't had a nice album since Dream Chasers. That album went crazy. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to it. Cause I because that's what I've been learning is trying to figure out when niggas really sold their souls. Because a lot of niggas didn't, you know, you don't initially do. It's just when you ready to, when they, it's time to make that jump. That's when you start getting asked to do questionable shit or ignore. Sometimes they don't even need you to do stuff. They need you to ignore shit. Sometimes some of your favorite artists be big ass drug mules. Don't believe me? What happened to Juice World? Why was on Juice? Why was Juice World on a plane with all that shit? Shit, but I'm I'm quite certain though that Orlando Brown is a controlled opposition. How Orlando Brown got got all these stories and all this everything, all this everything, and he don't never show no proof. That's why I like him, Jaguar White, right? Um, Gene Deal, these type of people. It's like I can believe some of your stories and shit like that, but how do you have this many stories and you don't have a no pictures? Just not even a picture. You ain't even gotta have like. Video of like shit, bro. You ain't even got a picture of y'all together this night and all this other shit. And, th- and thank you, blessing. And that's the thing. If, if he and that's that's the telltale sign, especially somebody that's C list, B list, C list, D list type. Like, nigga, if you was really saying some shit, like, saying some shit, they would have wiped you off. But it's why I can't ever get traction. It's why I can't ever get traction. Because the moment he shows some some evidence, the moment he shows some fucking evidence, then it's going to, bro, Orlando Brown will go viral like no other. And that's with same thing with Jag Wright, Gene Deal, these motherfuckers, if they showed any real evidence, they would be on for real. Remember, we hearing all these stories about Diddy, but Diddy ain't never not. Why wouldn't Diddy, Diddy knock off Gene Deal? And I'm gonna tell you the biggest reason why he ain't worried about Gene Deal. Gene Deal is not as innocent as he portrays. This nigga claims he's the big homie and everybody respected him and shit, but somehow he knew of all this shit, but then he wanted me to believe, oh, it was behind this door and I don't know what really happened back there and oh, whatever, nigga. Gene Deal make it seem like he worked for Puffy and quit the first day once he saw Puffy, what Puffy was on. Nigga, you was, you was rocking with that nigga forever. You know all this shit, but you weren't there. You never did that shit in front of me. Who the fuck are you? Because at least that's how I can believe Mark Curry, boy. Mark there, them niggas be like, I saw this. I saw this. And they know how that shit make them look. And Mark Curry actually said, I was on some different shit then. And I hate that I was on that shit. And I'm not on shit like that now. So ain't no point in lying about it. This nigga would tell, bro, Mark Curry told about the champagne bottles and the drugs and all that shit. Gene Deal give you a bunch of stories, but then be like, I really didn't see anything. Nigga, then what good are you? Because there's literally other people talking about Diddy that say they saw shit and ain't afraid of that shit.
Then as soon as somebody else come out with a story, then here you come, oh yeah, I do remember this, and I remember them, and this, this, this. Like as soon as Cassie shit hit the ground, Gene Deal and the rest of them niggas hit the ground running, nigga. Which, again, if I'm going to believe everything these niggas say, you're just as gross as Diddy. Again, Diddy made these girls victims, but y'all run around trying to profit off these victims, telling, like, stories in. But, bro, if y'all know all the shit y'all really know and really care about these girls, why ain't y'all called 12? Especially you, Gene. You know all types of police. I mean, because if you really think about it like this with Gene Deal and Jag Wright, all the things they said have never led to a single arrest, a single settlement of a lawsuit. It ain't even led to Puffy taking so much as a mild hit on his name. But the only thing that has happened is y'all made a lot of money in the process. If I got in contact with Gene Deal right now, I'm like, bro, I want you to come on here so you can help people so maybe we can help spread awareness to, you know, hopefully get Diddy in jail one day. You know what that nigga's response is going to be? Well, let me tell you what my rate is. Because if Gene Deal was really about getting his word and all this shit out, he ain't, bro, he don't. He ain't about that. He, he about doing big time interviews. He want to go do Vlad and all these niggas is going to pay him a couple bands. Because they going to make a few bands doing the interview, breaking it up and all that shit. Yeah, I agree with you on that blessing. But I at least give Mark. Mark definitely comes across way more honest than the rest of them. But he he kind of older now. Y'all know how some older niggas get that talking itis, bro. Trying to fit every point in one sentence. You know how, you know how niggas, old niggas get. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Because here's how it happens, Alan. Like if you start if you start off singing in your little rinky dink studio, you're never gonna get on ever. It's just that simple. You need them to get on. Cause YouTube fame, one thing about YouTube fame is unless you get to like Mr. Beast territory, you'll never be famous like that. Even people like, you could have a million subscribers. Your million subscribers aren't ever going to look at you like a Brad Pitt or anybody. Even if they see you out and they want to talk to you and meet you. They, they'll meet you and all these things, but they're not going to feel like they just met an A-list celebrity. Even if, you be, even if in the last year you could show how you got more clicks, views, and everything than said celebrity. A lot of these YouTubers can show you how they made more money than your favorite celebrity this last year. And it still won't hit the same. That's because the the company's got all the media and all the other things that it takes to make you that star. For, for a YouTuber to make the news, it's almost always bad. Any type of news, entertainment news, anything. You know, they don't never have feel-good streamer stories, but... Let a YouTuber get caught up in some shit or whatever, and then they quick to be like, oh, this YouTuber had the YouTube channel with blah, 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 and then they know everything about the nigga. And if you turn them niggas down, you can't turn, you turn them niggas down, it's a wrap. There is no top A-list star that is an A-list star without being backed by some major corporation. That's why I took Mr. Beast and, and niggas like Logan Paul ungodly amounts of subscribers, 
unreal, like nine figure subscribers for corporations to really grab them. Now, can can niggas get sponsorships for their channels and shit like that? Obviously, like. But as far as them turning you in, bro, first of all, the moment that they try to get, if they, if somebody from the industry try to get you over there, you're going to have to change up a lot of shit. You're going to have to change up shit. It's just the way it is. But a lot of people want to get, people want to be bigger and bigger and bigger. Some people desire, I don't know how much they would really want if they knew what it came with. A lot of people really desire, I want to, I want to, you know, be followed by paparazzi and people taking pictures of me everywhere I go and shit like that. And as a streamer, yeah, you can get you can get to a point where you get recognized a lot, but ain't nobody gonna ever look at you like you want an Oscar or a Grammy. Even if I did, there's a lot of fucking streamers that I respect way more than mo bro. There's streamers who editing and shit are better than Fox. A, B, C, C, whoever the fuck. But since their shit doesn't come on legacy media, it don't get recognized. And some people want that recognition. And a lot of times that recognition comes with a decent paycheck. But it's that fine print that gets you. I mean, and it's crazy. Like, think about the amount of YouTubers, and these niggas are making money. That's got like a million subscribers, right? Making money. These niggas got the big boy plaque, everything. They got the big boy play button, everything, right? I think the big boy is at 10 million. The biggest one. But the plaque you get at a million or whatever, you making money. You making a decent amount of money. Nigga, you can be an avid watch YouTube every day and you can damn near find a new channel with a million subscribers every day that you've never heard of. Some of the stories I've done about YouTubers, I'm like, I ain't never watched this nigga, but the channel's got like two, three million motherfucking subscribers, so... Just like with that Aiden Ross Playboy Cardi shit, where it's just like, like Aiden Ross got a little bit of mainstream fame, but I mean, he's plugged. He's a total fucking plant. I mean, because it's just crazy how things are now. I mean, to be honest with you, somebody like academics back in the day, they would have put this nigga on MTV if this would have been like the 90s. But the way that they be wanting them is, again, it's better for the, for like, especially like for media companies and especially like record labels, for example. It's better for them to leave niggas in this space and get what they can out of this space than it is to really come grabbing people out of this space. I mean, even Logan Paul, look at the crazy ass route he's had to take to become like where he's at now. He had to like have this fake ass boxing career that started off with like celebrity boxing. All of a sudden they want to want us to believe he's a real boxer. And then now all of a sudden he's, Use that shit and the hate he gets from that for wrestling to go, well, we know the nigga can't really fight. Maybe we can teach this nigga how to wrestle and use that hate over here. I mean, academics has let people know several times how he was plugged in by Lucian Grange to have all that access to 6 9 and all that other shit. Like, these niggas will tell motherfuckers to they to they face how 
shit going and people just don't believe it. Academics talking about going to what he called the Illuminati hub. The fuck? Illuminati hub? But it's just too simple to say to every nigga that's successful. It, it depends the level of success. So is it possible that Godfrey's done 60 movies and ain't no nigga ever done no gay shit to him? Yes. And let me tell you how. Were these 60 movies? Did he do 60 fucking movies where he won an Academy Award in every one? Was he the lead man in all these movies? If the answer is no, then it's quite possible that he just had a mid-grade acting career. Because again, it, it's it's when you want to go to that next level when other shit's involved. What that other shit is, it could be anything. So that just so Corey saying that, that's why it makes me feel like, well, Corey's done over three movies, so. He's done gay shit. That's why he feels like, well, if I did that shit after three movies, everybody's done it. And here's the other thing that's going to shock you. Every dude that's done some gay shit, every girl that's busted open on the casting couch, they didn't get on. That ain't even, people be acting like that shit's a guarantee. Why do you think so many people end up getting taken advantage of? Because there's a lot of motherfuckers even listening to me right now. Like, nigga, them type of checks, them niggas talking, yeah, I'll bunny hop around, let them niggas play with my booty. That nigga show ain't lying, but I ain't putting that shit in the chat. I get it. I wouldn't put it in the chat either, my nigga. And Michael John White said it, bro. And that's what I'm saying. If you watch YouTube, YouTube, one thing about YouTube with the actors is, bro, it let me catch up with a lot of actors where I was like, man, you were good and shit. Like, why wouldn't you on? Them motherfuckers be like, either they would have stories about how a nigga that was letting zesty shit go on happen, or they would give a story about how they went to a party, saw some shit they ain't really rock with. Because they didn't even tell you where it's like, You'll go to a party or some shit. It ain't necessarily you get there and them niggas butt ass naked like you need to get naked too. But it's just kind of a feeling out process. And if you don't be with it, then you just start noticing you ain't getting too many calls after that. I mean, it's so many of these actors. We be like, damn, that's what. Oh, okay. And it's like, I mean, Don DC Curry. And this, and again, the selling out ain't always gay. Like D.O. Hewley. D.O. Hewley's level of sellout, I don't necessarily think was him doing some gay shit. I ain't saying that he couldn't have. But this nigga literally sold out for a whole ass fucking political party. You know, when you start doing compromise and shit, that's selling out, bro. Selling out ain't always your booty. I mean, think about with John Witherspoon, R.I.P. Pops. It's hard for me to believe that he was doing some of that shit. And the main reason why it's hard for me to believe it. This nigga did a million movies and it was never nothing more than a C character in the show or movie at best. But somehow he would shine in his small ass role.
See, but that's why you don't want to go to the top. That's what, see, blessing, that's why you don't want to go to the top. That only comes with that top layer. Once you get to the top layer and you start showing out, then yeah, they'll turn you into a dope fiend and everything for the public, quick than a motherfucker. Have your ass committed and everything. Because you they've given you a lot. In their minds, it's almost like they're protecting their investment. Yeah, R.I.P. Pops and B. Pops did a million movies. But he ain't never get to, he wasn't getting no this type of shine you think that motherfucking Morgan Freeman would get and shit like that. You just can't get to that top tier level of big without them having something on you because they want to control you. And who is they? Whatever company's involved. Whatever company's bankrolling you. Bro, if you gave a motherfucker $20 million to do something, you felt like you owned them too. You know you would. Get back out. I'm not doing that right now. Bag all you want. I mean, it was even rumored Richard Pryor did a bunch of shit that a lot of people wouldn't like to admit. And again, everybody would just assume that it's gay. I don't know what it is, but I know I know a lot of shit that you don't that you don't want come with that shit. And I watch how the corporations like, bro. Here's one thing I learned, like behind the scenes, like when I was growing up and shit, like doing my uh, DJing and shit. Right. Here's something I learned. A lot of times, the big corporations. They see potential in the wrong shit. So you may be more talented than a motherfucker like singing, rapping, or some shit like that. And then you'll see the company take the other motherfucker over you. Sometimes it's because the company saw that this nigga will do no nefarious shit. They want rule breakers. If they can't really get no real dirt on you, then they really don't even want to fuck with you because they ain't going to be able to control you. Because once you see what the shit really is, then you'll, you'll just leave. Or you may even, you know, you may even read the contract and be like, wait a minute, this shit is odd and why does it say this and this, this and this? They want the shady motherfucker that's fast cash, you want to get the money in your hand, you're most likely going to blow it on stupid shit. They look for the dummy more than they look for the talent. Especially nowadays. Yeah, when you start getting to that top level, that's when the weird stories about you start happening. <laughs> That's the cra the crazy part about it is it's so easy to avoid. And you'll hear it from lots of people that avoided it where they just was like, yeah, nigga, I got to a point. They would ask me to do certain things and I didn't want to do them. And then it was that. That was that. They love getting the motherfuckers goals. I'll do anything to be famous. Come on over here. Like, niggas like Drewski, right? See, people would think that Drewski's like famous now because he do mainstream commercials. He's not famous. He, bro, they never going to give Drewski a TV show or no shit like that. He just control internet opposition. Meanwhile, he get to do, do all types of Google Pixel commercials and shit. 
But then at the same time, he's doing a stream with all the biggest YouTubers where they pretend to be in jail for, what was it, a week? Two days or some shit? Yeah, they yeah, and and, and I heard Danny Masterson uh, got his ass whooped. He's been getting beat up. Which that's kind of weird to me. How is he somewhere where he can get beat up with what he got convicted of? That generally don't even go down like that. That almost feels like he was set up. The 90s and early 2000s was basically the end of creativity. Because now it, they really just, they just get people where they can really just, especially like the rap game for like, at least it's been kind of quiet, I guess, knock on wood for a little while. But the rap game, it got to the point where they were literally going to the ghettos, grabbing the most violent ass niggas that, and would teach them to rap. Some of these niggas literally would tell you they did not know how to rap. And somebody like just came up and was like, man, you should rap with all the stories you got. It's like how Vaughn got on. Why do they want to go get the most violent niggas like that? Well, if the nigga get locked up, his streams are going to go through the roof. They getting all the money. If the nigga die, his streams are going to go nuclear. And they'll get all the money. Don't go down. Welcome to. You're playing with me. Go here, go down. Go deep. Yeah, but my thing, no, I guess my question is, KS, like, why wouldn't he PC'd up? Niggas that get, shit, generally go sit with other niggas like that. Oh, yeah, they got crazy insurance policies on the rappers. Them niggas get killed. Them niggas, bro, you would think, because everybody thinks that everybody's normal logic is when a rapper or artist die, the catalog just goes to their family. Because, bro, they don't even be owning their own shit. Like, let's say a, let's say a record label give you a million dollars. It's going to be an advance. And that's a big ass deal. But let's say you get it. First of all, is an advance, which means you got to pay it back. And then, so this goes back to what Alan was talking about. So why, when you get your advance, you don't just build your own studio so you can do the shit cheaper and, and have high quality music made cheaper? Nope. Even though they gave you a million dollars, you can only spend it where they tell you to. Yeah, you can have some pocket money and shit like that. But let's say you do buy a little studio and fix it up in your house and record. They won't approve any of those records. Because they get final say on what records. And you can come with all, you can, you can show them you made five albums worth of shit in your basement. They'll be like, nope, we can't approve this unless it's approved, uh, it's recorded at approved studios. And all of these approved studios is go are going to be overpriced. Mad overpriced. Everyone. Or to get your jewelry. You're only going to be able to fuck with certain jewelers. They not going to let you. They not even going to approve for you to get like uh, a low budget car. Unless your whole stick as a rapper or something is you a low budget rapper or some shit, they not letting you do that. They gonna make you get some expensive shit. And maybe you be like, bro, you need two or three with how you be rapping. Well, that's the thing, blessing. They make you blow the money. So even if you were, bro, you can look this shit up. It's easy to look up too. So even if you were, so everybody thinks every rapper's stupid. Like, no, some of them rappers get in there and they be like, nope, I'm not getting got like that. 
then they realize that the contracts say, nope, you can't do this, you can't do that. Niggas will record. Bro, you hear it all the time. Niggas will be like, man, fans are asking for their music, and they like, nigga, I got all types of recorded shit, but I can't release it, because if I do, the company going to sue me. So sometimes a company will just sign you because you getting too hot. They got somebody else they trying to push right now. They'll sign you just to put you on the shelf just to get out of the way. Then, after a couple years, they'll just drop you. They gave you 50 to 100 racks and you owe that. Then they started hitting niggas with 360 deals. Do you know what a 360 deal is? That means the record label gets a cut of anything you do. That's why it's called 360. I'm talking about, let's say Meek Mill got a 360 deal. Let's say I hit Meek Mill and I'm like, yo, Meek Mill, just on the humble. Hey, nigga, I'm going to give you $1,000 to come do LNC. The record label find out they want their money from him. Yo, clothes, you bro, you got you gonna have to you gotta deal with the stylist and all that shit gonna be expensive. So that's what, and that's another reason why you sit and be like, damn, all these rappers damn near look alike. They damn near all got the same chains, same cars, same stacks of money. And it's because that's all they approve to have is that shit. And them a little mansion. And that'd be it. Well, okay, there's a couple of methods. One is they'll do extreme love bombing. What does ex the extreme love bombing look like? This is like when a nigga like Yo Gotti is getting ready to sign somebody, and they in the studio, and this nigga Yo Gotti pulls out a bag that's got $100,000 cash in it. And this nigga just got all these bands just on the fucking table. And they just like, you sign this paper, this shit, yours. Sometimes they get niggas like that. Sometimes they'll get a couple badass bitches, the baddest bitches they ever seen. Them niggas, the threesome of their life. For hours. Nigga may sign. They may they may get a nigga on camera doing gay shit. But here's the crazy thing. If you don't sign, they not they, like they ain't gonna have no gun in your head. You can always walk away from it. And that's the thing the companies will always tell you, and they right. You can always walk away from it but they will make it so enticing to not. And then if they catch you with that gay shit, they'll tell you, nigga, you don't sign this tape coming out tomorrow. Bro, plies, the, and, and exactly. And plies will tell you. That's the, bro, unless you're willing to go all the way with something, and then here's the crazy thing. No matter what it is, dep depending on who you piss off, if they really feel like you should sign with them and you don't, man, sometimes you can get blackballed just for not signing. And, and that's the crazy part with Plies. That's why Plies is like, fuck it. I'll take this internet money and just be done with it. Get my little ass cap up and be done with it because Plies was mainstream as fuck. Him and T-Pain was mainstream as fuck. That all the, and, and bro... Plies was dropping a gang of hits, and T-Pain was damn near becoming the new Nate Dog. And the new niggas crashed and burned. Wasn't, I didn't like Plies like that, but I ain't gonna lie, like he wasn't, the streets wasn't fucking with him.
personally, I fuck with internet plies more. Internet plies funny to me. Bro, just the shit I saw on the local level level of local celebrity. And I'm not even talking about just like with me. Like, I wasn't the biggest nigga in the city. I was one of the top niggas of the city, but I, I was never, I was never considered like a top five nigga. I was probably considered a top five DJ, but as far as personality and celebrity, never. Maybe like top 20, top 15 at best. And the shit just saw, like, being around, like, NBA players and shit like that. Them niggas, they, that's why that shit, the NBA money, that shit different. They move by a different beat. That's why rappers really be wanting to hang out with athletes, because them niggas are actually rich and get to do what they want. And now that this drill rap shit is starting to come to a close, all these big companies are about to stop signing these type of niggas. I mean, the whole Chicago drill scene over. Duck dead, Bond dead, all the O Block locked up, 63rd scattered in a motherfucker, Dirt can't come back. Shiesty started fucking with them niggas. He locked up. Everybody that fuck with Dirk locked up or dead. He the police. He somehow he never gets in trouble for anything. But it's the biggest of all of them. Like, that's another thing. Some of them niggas are police too. Just so you know. Some of them big ass rappers, they police too. I mean, they doing the same thing to Atlanta. Because, like, when Lucci come home, Lucci can't go to Atlanta? But Lucci get... So Lucci coming out and shooting videos in the hood? Well, we'll see how that goes. Lucci getting out, what, a couple weeks? He getting out next... What, tomorrow? It's next month, right? Tomorrow has the... You know, this is a leap year. Well, drill rap's basically dead. You got some cities that's bad. I'm like, y'all was asking for it. That shit pretty much a rap. Now, does that mean people go, no, nah, it's just like, it's, as far as the mainstream effect of it, it's over. Who I smoked fucked a lot of people up because a lot of people didn't realize they was talking about like a bunch of real dead niggas. That song was the beginning of the end of, of like the popularity of drill music. Now, Dirk and Young Boy, I mean, they still, I'm talking Main Street popularity. Like, Young Boy, he was on his way. They was like, they was trying to make him the big nigga did. This niggas, just, they just got him in Utah just sitting there. Again, I stay out of that devil shit. Y'all can have all that demon time, bro. Y'all stay prayed up. If that means I'll be a broke nigga never riding in a Bugatti, then so be it. I can go to a dealership and sit in one if it's that fucking deep.
Meek Mill did that shit. Corey acting weird. And Mayor Henry. I knew the news was going to catch when she said, yeah, I don't have nothing to do with that charity. The nigga literally laughed explaining. And that video of her denying it from the news, that shit already got 100,000 views, nigga. Tick, talk. Gun, shot, bullet, bullet, bullet. Fifteen chairs, seventeen hundred dollars a piece. You do the moss. Nigga, Dane Placco didn't even say nothing today. He cooling. He, I can't wait till he drop his shit. Dane, the streets is fiending. Dane, we need you to drop that new hit, my nigga. Nigga, that news report gonna come on. Doom, doom. Fuck Henry. What's up, niggas? I know you ain't lying about charities. What? You been lying about shit. You love my style, bitch. And he gonna drop that ether beat, nigga, and he gonna give her 64 bars of madness. He's getting two minutes for menacing. Low key, Dane one step away from calling her a bitch on the news. I know he's called her all types of bitches off the air, nigga. Has Dane Placco called Tiffany Henry the bitch off the air? One for yes, two for no. I guarantee he done called her a bitch. Dane, you ain't never called her a bitch. Oh, the fucking bitch is lying again. I'm sick of covering this lying bitch. Honey, hand me the remote. I can't watch no more of this fucking cunt. Dane! I'm sorry, honey, but she's a fucking... She's the C word, honey. You know, white people don't like when you call each other cunts. They will pull it out in a pinch. Dane has called her a, a bitch and a cunt on multiple occasions. This has happened. <laughs> yeah, white people don't. White people, bro. You know how black people get when you call their mama a bitch? That's how white people get if you call their mama a cunt. Whoa, what the fuck is going on with you, bro? Yeah, language. <laughs> White people quick to say language. Language? That young black fellow, his mouth was very fresh this evening. Bitch, don't be calling my language fresh. Keyword word is a white woman's trigger word on everything, bro. I, I can't look. I wouldn't even play. I would normally be like, look, you want to see what happened? Call her one. But look, these white bitches might go crazy. I can't, look, I can't be held responsible for some white bitch calling you a nigga to your face and you blaming me. Well, fuck you, nigger. Wait, what? 
Call me a fucking cunt. It's the same thing as a nigga. Nigger, you heard me. <laughs> this is why I'm like Corey Holcomb. I have no fucking friends. Burnt relationships. Nigga can't even get the 10,000 subscribers. This is why. At least I understand this about myself. Where to go but up from here. Oh, yeah. When you hear a white person call somebody a cunt, nigga, that's the other thing. They they get triggered when they hear it, but if they say it, they mad. They not pulling that out unless they mad. Fucking cunt cut me off. I can't stand her mom. She's such a fucking cunt. Cunt is a whole state of mind for white people. <laughs> that shit's a whole state of mind when you hear them pull it out I know it makes you want to laugh but but they really mad bro <laughs> they are upset you know what I mean white people have turned this stream off and called me a cunt fucking cunt and just turned the stream off That nigger's always exposing us. Damn cunt. <laughs> Richard Lewis, ain't that Virgil? R.I.P. Virgil? Yep. A nigga known for playing a slave on TV to a rich white man. So basically... Meek Mill is Virgil was the original Meek Mill. Virgil was doing bunny hops and shit for the million dollar man. <laughs> Everybody has a price. Ain't that right, Meek? Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Money, 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 money. This nigga Meek Mill hopping around. Straight bitch. Grown ass man, bunny hopping. Do the bunny hop. Do the bunny hop. But I guess a nigga gonna end here. It's been a marvelous Wednesday. It is now Thursday. I've had fun this week. I'm expecting Tiffany Henry to feel a lot of pain tomorrow. Don't forget, we will be live for that board meeting on Monday. But for now, say goodnight to your boy. Make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button. Episode 100, my nigga. Damn, that's a lot of streams. CEO, appreciate it. Carl, Janice, appreciate y'all. Blessing. Good to see you, Carl. Big KS Dub. Very soon, KS Dub. Very fucking soon. I know y'all think my head is not out of the game. I am very much in tune right now. So, Natasha. I appreciate it. Almost at 10,000 subscribers, bro. How insane is that? It blows my mind every time I think about it. If I don't even make it, proud.
Got a lot of work to do, though. But then again, I'm probably lying. I am out of here. I am out of here. This week won't end without it, KS. And by week, Friday, won't end without it. But then again, I'm probably lying. Kendra, great evening. Appreciate it, everybody. They said I couldn't do it. It didn't mean nothing to me because I know what I can do. Y'all ain't even seen what I can do yet. <laughs> I know that shit comes across sounding like Tiffany Henry, nigga, but the niggas ain't even seen what I could do yet, nigga. I'm trying to give $10,000 back to everybody. <laughs> hey, before I get up out of here, somebody hand me that town credit card. Can you, can you hand me that town credit card right quick? Pretty please? No? Fuck y'all. Oh! Why are you doing bunny hops, Meek? Because you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat. Keep going. Count out loud. Count out loud. Huh? It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't cheat on your buddy hops. They suck. Your buddy hops suck. You got 250 more to go. Heavenly gracious, Father, we thank you for just another opportunity to come together for an incredible cause, and that is to eradicate breast cancer, oh God. WGN Investigates has an update on a questionable cancer charity now being investigated by the Illinois Attorney General. The South Suburban politician who the charity is named after is now denying direct involvement in the foundation that bears her name. All I can tell you is that I'm not the one on anything. That's the only thing I can tell you right now. So I'm just trying to answer to the So you're saying there's a, there's a foundation that's not registered, but it has nothing to do with you? Correct. That's true. Okay. That's so true. you're not aware of any of the work that they've done, money that they've raised, anything along those lines? Correct. Okay. Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard appeared on Roland Martin Unfiltered on YouTube last night. It comes after WGN Investigates reported the Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation claims to support cancer patients but hasn't filed required financial disclosures to say how it raises or spends money. Henyard's claim that she's not involved in the foundation is contradicted by statements in public meetings and social media videos she's posted. As we've reported, her top advisor was also listed as the charity's registered agent. The attorney general has ordered the foundation to stop soliciting money and is threatening legal action. God is great, bro. Without God, I could never make it to 100. I love y'all, man. God is indeed great. Yo, Good night, CEO. What's going on, boys? How are you? Yo, dab me up. Yo, all right, damn. What part of the city are you from? Yo, what's up? there, brother. Hey, yeah. What's up? Yeah. Right. You guys good. ready for this? Take this. Oh, all right, sick. Uh, why don't you guys come inside? Don't scare me. These are the guys. I'm Octavius Gray. And I'm Steve. Steve Lavoie. Carl, I'm your favorite trapper's favorite trapper. Yeah, Carl, you done missed the new intro and outro and everything, nigga. If you are, baby, I'm looking so fly. Sunset rooftop, yeah, that's nice, right? Family first always, nigga. You know where I'm at. Bear, Finding you is like a trash.
God is great. That's 100. Hey, Carl, that's just one of them. Hey, Carl, it's a new whip every day. Every day. Am I lying, LNC? Yeah. 